Nobody panic. We're live. Jamie's late. That never happens. That was totally his fault, by which means I mean it was my fault this time. So I started the stream 10 minutes early. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Uh, wow, 42 people already sitting here waiting. Welcome. This is Dead Dodge Garage Live, the Sunday thing featuring Tom. Hi. From Rocket Restorations. If you somehow don't know, then you probably wouldn't be sitting here waiting already. Hey, you should mute that. I did. Good. We get a Take really a good view of your chin when you do that, just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> How's it look? Uh, stubble. Yeah. You guys, yeah, I was, I was, lo I was loading yeah. a sway bar in a shop and into my truck, and I threw it in there. Totally missed. It came back up and hit me right in the bottom of my chin on Friday. So that was fun, dude. I took a giant screwdriver to the nose on Friday. I don't know how it didn't start pouring blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't get to see it when Tom Thank threw you. out his action hero beard. It was great. It was pretty long good. Live, long live Tom's action hero beard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my wife lets me do it like once a year. She hates beards, so it's not worth the grief if it isn't. <laughs> yeah. I've been informed that everyone prefers mine shorter. Uh, so I wrapped up my Dart convertible video. If you guys saw the community post, that's the 63 convertible Dart. I don't mind Tom. He's eating pizza. Um, I'm hungry. Anyway, at the beginning of the video, I still had the wacky hair and this. And then at the end of the video, it's all gone. Mm -hmm. Um Anyway, howdy, everybody. Uh, live from Leaving Uncle Tony's Live. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, good stuff. Um, yeah, howdy to Donnie, who's in first somehow. Paul Steinberg, who said, good evening, Jamie and Tom. Great videos on the Roadrunner. Yes. How Thanks, grumpy are you that uh, my Roadrunner video came out before yours? Scale of one to ten. <laughs> sure. Seven, maybe an eight. <laughs> uh, you kind of spoiled. You kind of spoiled it. <laughs> yours is better. And uh, mine wasn't even about the car. I said that several times, and I missed no. a couple pieces of Hemi trivia, so that's good. And Tony made sure to set me straight over in his live when I dropped in. You forgot the reinforcement for the snubber and the triangular braces at the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I do love joy. Donnie's jealous. Well, don't worry because it needs a Hemi and a bunch of other things to be a whole car. So, like, it's cool. Don't get me wrong, but it's still like an uphill battle. So, yeah, and like a million people ask where the engine is. Um, it's in a storage unit. We're working on getting access to it. It's a complicated story. It came from an estate sale. It went for way cheaper than I ever thought it would go for. I was not expecting to win it, and I won it. I went and did the preview. That's the first part of the video I did, and then went and picked it up. But it went for. I thought it was a heck of a price on it. I mean, I've, I never thought I'd be able to own a Hemi car. This one was, it was just, a, you know, it was a local estate sale. It wasn't advertised very well. And got to take advantage of your opportunities, you know? Yeah. You're always watching that stuff. I'm not, I'm not up on that at all. Every week you're sending me another auction and another estate sale and another, like, this guy is plugged into the market. He knows where this stuff is. Well, as I said, it's a good segue to my Bear Jackson video today. I hope you guys were watched that. It's, I did a Meekum video a couple weeks ago, kind of like summing up the the market and where we're at. And I've actually kind of enjoyed it. You know, I, I watch all the, the videos afterwards on DVR and basically skipped all the Mopars, which I'm sure probably 90% of the people on here do anyways. No, but yeah. it's just kind of fun watching the cars and pointing out like, and I'm not, I'm not trying to like call out cars. I mean, there's a couple of cars that are bad. I'm going to do another video next week and I'm going to call it some real junk. Um, I'm not really trying to do that. I'm just trying to point out like just little details that most people don't see. That just are like red flags for me. And it's like, I've seen enough cars over the years where like, if I see a picture and I see that wrong on the car, most of the time, there's a lot of other wrong with that car. Yep. So, yep. Well, that's like, I did the video on the grill blackout, which I know is one of your big things. And it really mm -hmm. is. It's just such a huge, hey, wait a second. It's so obvious. It's easy to, easy to notice. And once you know to look for that, a car with it not done, it, it just looks so wrong. And it's such a small thing. Like, it's like, it's not that right. hard to do. It really isn't. And it's like, mm -hmm. it, the car looks terrible with it. Like, the designers yeah. back in the 60s would just roll in their grave if they saw people not doing that. Like, there's a reason why they did it, you know? Yep. Mm. But that was part of my commentary in that video. Like, if they didn't do that, if they didn't know to do that, then what else, you know, mm -hmm. what else is wrong? So, 
Yeah. Uh, at, at a maid, just to tell you, there actually was a Honda scooter that a state sale that I was really close to bidding on. It was an 86 free. And uh, I think it sold for like 300 bucks, but it wasn't running, didn't didn't drive. And I kind of had my hands full with the heavy car, so I didn't buy that, but I almost did. <laughs> Adam, how many of those do you have right now? Um, I don't know, but I know it's a big number. Uh, yeah, said hi to Lovejoy. Glenn Yoromi, how's it going? Other Glenn, good evening, people. Just jump ship from Uncle Tony. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Robert Fitch, who bought the, uh, the Valiant. Wayne's World, Wayne's World, party time, excellent. Making any progress on that, Robert? I really like that car. Super That's a cool six. car. Yeah, yep. Robert Fitch bought that 65 Valiant with the Super 6 that I did a video on it. Jamie did a video on it. Yep. Cool car. Yep, I like that one. And then we've got the 63. It's just sitting there taunting me. Um, yeah, yeah, we need to talk about that. Hey, I'm all ears, man. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, sold, I sold two cars this weekend, so that was good. Really? What'd you sell? The Polara. The 61. Oh, why would you do that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> my, my my brother was bitching about something about like how he wanted to make at least his money back on it <laughs> after he, what he paid for it. Fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll find another one. Anyway. Uh, well, Stacey... so, so some of you watched uh, Jamie's uh, Lemons video this weekend. We were... Oh, yeah. Strongly considering taking that 61 Polara and making it into a Lemons car because that was that's probably like Jamie's definitely had some videos out there that have done way better than any of us thought. And that that one's probably the king. Like you had like 90,000 views on that. Like, and then everybody you, loves did that a, car. you did a video on it too, and people loved it. Oh, and I, I mean, I totally half assed that video. Like, I did yeah. <laughs> not put a lot of effort into it. It was just like, what's the difference between a Polara and a Phoenix? And like, I, mean, I got that, that's like my second or third highest video I've ever done. Yeah. It's crazy. It's it's a cool car. I tried to tell you. The internet loves it. Oh well, it's fine. It's my, fine. My, my 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 brother's commenting. So yeah, oh, sorry, Gary. Yeah. Well, the, the other nice part is, you know, I actually good. I'm I'm going down to L.A. in uh, April for Spring Fling, the big Mopar show down there, and I'm actually going to deliver it for the guy. He's out of Vegas. So I'm going to meet him in L.A. He's going to take it home from there. So nice. That's nice. I don't like I don't like going empty places. So yeah, uh, Stacy's sick as hell. But here, howdy, Stacy. Get well soon. Good evening, all classics. How's it going? Oh, somewhere I saw him say he had to go get a drink to play along. <laughs> Is anyone still, excuse me, playing the Dead Dodge Garage drinking game? We've been playing that. I don't. Johnny I don't. Utah. So. Good stuff. What's that? Johnny Utah. Johnny Utah. Nice. Nice. I've got Hello, the very Johnson. last Hazy Honey Crisp. I mean, they have more at the store, but that's not the point. Mm. Uh, my sister <laughs> says, please give the like button some love on your way in or your way out. Either way. Thanks for doing that. Hail, hail. The gang's all here. Ready for another beer. Howdy, Rooster. Or pizza. Yes, we're late for our own party. Yeah, Tom's got pizza. Stage zero, checking in. Howdy, Jason. Oh, Jason sent me a, a present. It's a magnet base camera mount it's like a nice rubberized so it doesn't scratch paint or anything magnetic aimable gopro or phone mounts awesome i've already used the crap out of it the problem is i'm gonna leave it somewhere that's what i did with my tripod that's why i don't have a tripod anymore <sighs> yeah some people are saying we're buffering i'm not having any problems but i don't know huh. um multiple people mm -hmm. weird yeah. Um, I'm not having any evidence of connection issues on my end. So if we're cutting out at all, I apologize. Um, yeah, looks, looks fine over here. So hopefully you can hear us. That's the important part. You really don't need to see us necessarily. You know, it's, it's really funny on that first Meekum video I did. Jamie was showing me there's like a lot of analytics with YouTube and everything. Mm. And it shows you like when people stop watching in the video, like there's a line like straight down to when I stop talking. As soon as I stop talking, show a car, it goes like way up. Like yeah. a lot less people dropped out when they stopped seeing my face. So I thought that yeah. was kind of funny. Not when you stop talking, your monologue, your introduction, explaining you know, what you're doing and all that. Yeah, it, it kind of dropped and then it jumps right up where the car's at. And then after the cars, it ends. And it's just like, you know. Um, people don't see my face, I don't understand. Well, uh -huh. you got to say your piece, but yeah, it's just all about the balance. 
I think mm-hmm. I think your uh, Barrett Jackson video today, I think you struck a, a much better mm-hmm. balance. Donnie says they can hear me loud and clear, but your Wi-Fi is having an issue. But I'm I'm hearing him loud and clear, so I don't know, guys. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, yeah, I, mean, I got the li- I got the live feed on here too. It sounds fine to me. So yeah, I don't know. weird. I don't know what to tell you. I think I think we're okay. Hopefully, we're okay. Huh? Weird. Yeah, I, I have no idea why he'd be glitching, Donnie. That's very strange. Howdy, Mark Norman. How's it going? I'm way behind in the comments because, of course, I am. Oh, Glenn Yeromi said, um, I really like the Blue Charger and the Roadrunner videos this week. Yeah, yeah. The Charger videos seem to be pretty pretty popular. Um, that's a cool car. It still isn't necessarily all the way done, but seeing as how it's leaving this coming week, next week, when you headed down there? Well, probably next week. It depends on weather. I got to wait for a weather window down the mountain. So. Right. But yeah. I got to deliver that car. The car's going to Germany, so it's got to go to the Bay Area, Richmond. And then I uh, may or may not have bought another early A body in near Reno, Nevada. So I have to cross two big mountain passes. But uh, Dude, we yeah, are on I'll, a roll. I'll save a surprise on that one, but it's another early A body. So we are on a roll on the early A bodies. Mm-hmm. We're cornering the market. Yep. I don't even. I don't even like them that much, but I've ended up with a lot of them. <laughs> I like the '67 to '76 cars more, but the early cars have a lot of character, and they're so light. And as long as you don't try to put a big block in them, you know, that's fine. So I love them. The Barracuda, mm-hmm. of course, is my favorite. But I have to say, this convertible Dart drives great. And the random unknown 360 that's in it, it runs amazing. It does big one-tire burnouts. It's it's cool. It's a great car. I actually drove it, drove it today, and it did great. Well, the thermostat was a little stubborn. That's fine. Wow. Well, Oh, David Biznet. What's up, DDG? Unbelievable. My gas gauge came to life after all the checks and double checks. Overfilled the new tank, drove it all over doing errands, looked down, and the gauge works. Ha! Huh. Interesting. Nice. My demon, um, the sweep, the sending unit is a little worn out. So it'll, if I usually re- keep that car pretty low on fuel, I don't drive it that much and I don't want gas just going bad in the tank all the time. So it usually doesn't read at all, but sometimes. After driving it and keeping fuel in it, it'll just magically start reading for a while, but then it goes away. Have you done a gas gauge video? Because that would be a really good video that everyone needs. You did I one. I did the gas yeah. gauge video a long time ago. Okay. Like, uh, you should really think about, like, redoing that. Because, well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you want to redo a video. But, like, I'll tell you what. Like, gas yeah. tanks, like, none of them work. And it's really not that hard. It's, it's almost, like, 99% of the time, it's either the ground at the tank or the flump suck. It's one of those. Uh, yeah, float. I don't know. Bad sending unit problems, or you know, the regulator, the limiter. Excuse me, voltage limit limiter. That's kind of what I focused on the most. Uh, but well, yeah, but when that goes out, the other gauges go out too. So that's pretty easy to diagnose. Yeah. Adam said something about uh, pepperoni pizza and a side of your hoarding level capabilities. <laughs> nice, nice. Stacy also loves the Roadrunner, and he'll be in touch uh, about some cop car wheels. Old Stuff Rules also likes your car. Yeah, it's really cool. I, You know, a 68, um, a 68 Roadrunner to me is probably the ultimate Hemi car, just because of the stripper budget nature. I, I just think it's really cool. Hemi Charger, cool. But the Hemi Roadrunner, ugh, party. Well, and that's the reason why I like that car so much. It's mm-hmm. like, it, it's the epitome of Roadrunner. It's like, yeah. it has no radio. I mean, like, no trim. Like, yeah. they put a short grip in it and the Hemi, and that's it. I guess mm-hmm. technically the automatic was an option, but it was no cost. Like, no I don't really cost. count that as an extra cost option. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. like, if I was going to order a Roadrunner from the factory, I probably would get a four-speed. But four other speed. than that, that's yeah. pretty much exactly how I would order the car. I love the red. I love the silver interior. Like, it's pretty it's pretty rare where you can buy a car that, like, exactly how you would order it from the factory. Right. No, I totally agree. It's really cool. And especially to have one like as low miles and solid metal as that one is. Now, here's a question. Being an automatic, would that have been a rubber mat car? Because there's carpet. Uh, I don't <laughs> know. That That is a very good question. I don't know. Um, I was trying to do some research on that. I was, we were having that discussion on Friday. I got to mm-hmm. do more research on that. I don't know. I know all the four-speed cars were carpet. Right. They didn't have a rubber floor mat for a four-speed. I don't know about it. If anybody knows, please say in the chat. Um, yeah. 
I think it was still carpet. I think they put carpet in all the Roadrunners. Okay. But I could definitely be wrong on that. I got to do more research on that. Gotcha. Well, I don't know. And there's carpet folded up in the back, but that could have been from the, the little refresh they did in the 90s when I'm assuming they put it back on the street, pulled the cage and everything. Very true, but it does look like it has original carpet in it. So, right. I mean, that so, is original carpet. I don't know right. if it's like that it came car, out of that car, but it looks like there is original right. carpet in it. So, right. I, my, my guess is they were all carpet, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know that for sure. That was a question that, that I was asked. So, yeah, I was curious. Mm -hmm. Howdy, McLovin. How's it going? Uh, Super Satellite Garage wants to know if I'm on the clock. He's shared that I'm writing this off as work time. I'm not paying uh, him for this. <laughs> uh, howdy, Joe. How's it going? No beer money for us. How dare you? <laughs> Thank you, D David Biznet. Enjoying the DDG and Rocket videos. Good content on the cars. Thank you. Really appreciate that. We're doing our best. And um, again, I'm pretty sure everyone in here probably already knows Tom and has subscribed to the Rocket Restorations channel, but if you haven't, you should. He's doing cool stuff over there. If you're interested in the, the auction drama, Tom's got a really good just breakdown of these different auction prices and the cars that have been going across the block at Meekham and Barrett Jackson. Um, you know, he has a lot of unique insight on that stuff, and it's cool watching your video along with everyone else. I, I think it's working really well. Well, it's just, it's just the little details. Like there was, for example, in the video, I point out a 68 Hemi GTX mm -hmm. that had an air temp sticker in the quarter window. And like, and that was only put on AC cars. So like, mm -hmm. was the window replaced from an AC okay. car? Definitely okay. possible. But like, right. but why does a Hemi car have an AC sticker in the window? Like, well, wasn't it tinted that? too? You could get tinted glass, huh? Without, without AC, yeah. you could order tinted glass. Yeah, so, so though it's, it's unusual, but yes, right. you could. Yes. Right. Because yeah. I did notice it, it appeared that all the glass was tinted. So, yep. It did to yeah. me too, yeah. Because yeah. uh, my 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 uh, brother Gary was down there at Barrett, so he took a few videos for me, and I'm gonna use a couple more of those in my next video I'm doing. So, mm. oh nice, Bill Johnson says, "Hey, I actually drove the Cornet about 60 miles on Saturday. Show it, Griots or Griots or whatever the heck they're called. Awesome. Nice, very cool. Yeah, oh, we have right. we have definitely had a El Nino winter. It's been pretty nice. We had one good yeah. cold snap, but it's been." gorgeous weather all week so dude the sun i actually drove my convertible in the sun today it was amazing mm. i know i had to redo the whole ending to my video i ended it last night at night because i thought in my crazy brain i'd get it uploaded today um and then i put all the footage in my computer and realized that i have over two it was even more than i told you because i missed a group of clips it was like two hours and five minutes which is like that's almost as much as I had from the entire Chicago trip. I don't even know how that happened. Yeah, my my ADD would not last through two hours of one of your videos. I'm sorry. I just yeah. wouldn't. <laughs> um, but, you know, so now I have like five hours of editing to get that down to a reasonable, probably an hour, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. It covers a lot of stuff. There's a lot of good stuff in there. But that doesn't mean people have the patience to find it. Anyway. Uh, thank you, Rippler. Rippler, who says, great show. Thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, Rooster says that Hemi car is a keeper because you'll never get another one that cheap. Well, he's probably not wrong. Yeah, yeah. At least in that condition. I mean, 18,000 original miles. I mean, like, some of the sheet metal needs to be finished, but, like, that is such a clean car. I mean, just oh, yeah. so clean. Yeah. Old stuff rules. Said, great videos this week, Jamie. Thank you very much. I don't know if anyone noticed. I did four. I almost did five, but I didn't get it done. Yeah. Did you do four? No, I did two. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I did four. Oh, you're just counting them. Visual aid. Thanks yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying yeah. to help here. Apparently, yeah. I didn't land. So that's nah, fine. <laughs> All classics. Four. The number of the day is four. All classics says, uh, great video on getting that Hemi car. And uh, yeah, any real Mopar guy notices the lack of the blackout right away. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mike Furlan's here. Hello from Chicagoland, everybody. Hey Mike. How's, Howdy, Mike? How's it going? I was just talking about that Chicago video. I'm sure you caught that. Uh, Adam has 26 entire Honda scooters and probably 70K worth of parts. Nice. nice. Rippler also said your uh, Hemi car video was great. Oh, Thank nice. You. Appreciate it. Robert Fitch, I actually thought the dome light did work. Maybe that was the 63. I don't know. I don't a lot remember. of stuff did work in that 65, though. I, all, they're kind of the same car. All the white early A bodies kind of merged together. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. One of them had a seized brake. One of them had a grumpy PBD. Um, 
Yeah. Um, John Mullins has a great question. How does, and this was from a little bit ago, my apologies. Um, Freiburger is doing a live right now. I'll be damned. Um, yeah. Anyway, John Mullins wants to know, how does that Magnum and Tom 68 charger compare to the 360 you built for your demon? Love that Hemi car, Tom. Um, they're in the same neighborhood. I strongly suspect that the Magnum will beat my 360 on the top end, but it's so hard to do apples to apples because you're talking about a four-speed car with a 410 compared to a, an, an automatic with the wrong stall converter for that cam. And is that a 3.2 or is that like a 2.9? I don't know. I never I mean, checked. That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, it, it could be either. I was assuming three, two, but you know, doesn't matter either way. It's, I, I think it is, but I haven't really driven on the freeway. So right you know. at best, it's a three, two, you know, it might even be a two nine mm -hmm. gear. So um, it's so hard to tell. I mean, the, the charger pulls nothing like my demon does, but again, like there are a lot of reasons for that. So um, it, it also I, weighs significantly more, so it does. is a big difference too. That's very true, mm -hmm. very true. But also, I got to test that engine in the Red Seventy One with a stick. Um, that car had three fifty fives, I think, or three sevens. Yeah, I think that's right. I can't. Yeah, maybe it was three sevens. I'm not sure. Um, and a six speed, which is cool. But yeah, I have to say the Demon still pulls harder, but it, again, it's a good bit lighter. And I think, I don't know, that Magnum uh, confuses me a little bit because it, it doesn't want to take more than 30 degrees of timing. It's it's a little interesting. Anyway, um, hopefully the buffering thing has gotten better. Uh, I just got to a bunch of comments about that. I'm not seeing any uh, more recent complaints about quality. So anyway, hopefully we're coming in loud and clear. If not, I apologize. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. My sister's caffeinating tonight. That's a good idea. Very good idea. Al Sear wants to see more truck videos. I know they aren't as popular. Personally, really into pop top Ram chargers and macho power wagons. Well, you've come to the right place because we have some of those. Um, we need to do something with your crew cab. I know that's on the to-do list. We've just been so busy. I just yeah. haven't had time to get it out. Like I, I need you to spend a couple of days on that thing. Cause I'd really yeah. like to start driving it. But yeah. for those who don't know that we, we both did a video on this, but I bought a 77 Dodge crew cab. I have a 440 truck. Oh, you haven't, haven't done. I, I haven't done anything. On I did one real. I did one real early in the channel and it wasn't a good video. It was one of my first videos, but it's a, yeah, factory crew cab, long bed, 440 truck. And it's got, I don't know, they, they screwed the wiring all up. It has like an electric fuel pump that it doesn't need. And like the oil pressure, like was kind of randomly turning off and it needs a gas tank clean. But yeah, we need to spend a week on that. And we probably will when the weather gets better. I just, yeah. it's cold right now. It doesn't really fit in the shop because it's so big. No. So, like, <laughs> so uh, but, yeah. So maybe maybe, maybe this, this spring we'll get it out. There's a couple of projects I want to do this spring. So yeah, I had to put a crew cab long bed Ford in my shop on Friday to do a drive line, dude. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. my shop's only 30 feet deep, like and it's mm -hmm. pushing it. Um, mm -hmm. As far as trucks, I've still got the blue cup club cab here. I'm going to be doing an engine in that with my friend Dave. Um, he's got the engine mostly ready. He's still getting hardware together, but that may well be coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, maybe even this week. I don't know. We just kind of have to see how our schedules work out. Um, I just had one of my next projects dropped off. I'm not starting this immediately, but it's something that's going to be happening. Fuel injected 360 Magnum in a 75 short bed uh, D100 two wheel drive uh, pickup. So and with an overdrive automatic. So that's going to be a, a good one. And finally, yeah, yes, the the Magnum EFI Magnum swap um there will be more power wagon videos i have a 64 power wagon there's a video coming on that that i need to spend some time on i'll be doing more on the gold truck here i will be building a ramp truck at some point in the future um so yeah no worries al there will be more truck videos they you know we just go through projects as they come i mean whatever's in front of me whatever i'm working on is what i'm filming so um well we've got there's a couple pop tops at the shop too like mm -hmm. uh gary's uh macho ram charger like jamie will probably be putting some more work in that pretty soon yeah, yeah, yeah. i saw my trail dust for we got a carb yep. on that and i gotta get that thing out and really start driving it so we'll, we'll yeah. do some more stuff on that too 
Yeah, I want to do a follow up on that because we weren't able to actually road drive it at the time. Yep. So we've got to get all yep. that figured out. And um, I've got some stuff on doing the hubs. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there will definitely be more on both of those. We need to do a whole interior in Gary's truck. Uh, so that will yeah. be fun. Mine needs carpet too, but I, God, I, I ordered carpet for Gary's Ram Charger last week uh-huh. on Thursday, and I ordered black carpet because it's a black truck. Because of course it's a black carpet. So I go to move it the next morning, look in it, and it's like parchment. It's like not black at all. So I called the company immediately to cancel the order, and they shipped it on Monday without canceling the order. Wow. And it's like five hundred dollars in carpet that I have that I can't that would cost me a hundred bucks to get out, hundred bucks to get back, and I'm kind of stuck with it now. So I'm not super happy about that. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul Steinberg, uh, Roadkill did that video like two weeks ago. I, I watched that on the big screen when it came out. They put a four twenty six in uh, a Belvedere. Or let, did you they? Know, I just thought. Saw... Well, I, they posted like an eight minute video on YouTube today about it. I don't know what oh. the deal is. I don't know if they're doing cross marketing, but it's. Okay. It's funny, I keep on getting like Google alerts with my video being the second video and all these really popular videos, which I guess is good. That's um, what you want. Yep. Yeah. So I'm being suggested on these really popular videos. So, yeah. yeah. Huh. But yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. They did a, revi- a whole Roadkill episode on it um, a couple weeks back. So I didn't I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the, the cutting out thing has um, cleared up, although your picture froze a second ago. But I think it's fine. Audio is fine. It happens. Um, I, you know, I leave the camera sliding off the dash thing intentionally as like a, an homage to the first time it happened. I think it's funny. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Morris Bacon says Aberdeen steam powered Wi-Fi. You know, I'm really getting into steam engines. Uh, Dead steam garage. That's my next channel. 129 of you out there thanks for joining us if you have any questions feel free to drop them and um i'll try to catch up and read them or something um but if you haven't hit like on the stream you should really do that because that does good stuff for the thing it does cave davis here howdy dave and says uh hey guys jamie tom i need goodies dash panel for my 65 satellite is that something you have I might um, shoot me an email. I'll look. I don't know if I do or not. I've got a buddy who's got a lot of uh, early B body stuff too locally. So if he doesn't, if he, I don't have it, there's a chance he has it. But uh, you got to shoot me an email. I won't remember. So it's just uh, it's Tom at rocketresto.com. Just yeah. shoot me an email right now or after the live, and I'll I, I can take a look at this week sometime. I'm ridiculously busy this week. My wife's gone for a week, so I'm taking care of both kids by myself, and then. I got to go to California next week and then I'm pinned on vacation. Well, need a vacation for a week after that. So I got a lot of stuff going on. Donnie um, reminds me that my new channel is supposed to be called beyond the Dodge garage. I'm not mm-hmm. doing that. <laughs> um, Guy Kugler says, hi, Jamie and Tom, the Hemis, RTs and six packs get all the glory. We should let the crowd know about the deputy series. Were there, there were multiple deputy cars. I thought there was just one. Uh, I don't know. Is he talking about the Challenger deputy? Well, I assume that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, the the Challenger deputy was like the the cheapo car that came out with in the spring. It's like a zero option e body. Like it doesn't even have roll up or windows exactly. on it. They deleted the cigarette later, and yep. yeah, um, yep. they're cool cars. Um, you don't see very many of them. Mm. My '73, for whatever reason, the rear regulators were gone and the glass was fixed in place. It still had holes for window cranks, but there was nothing there. That was a 340 rally. Like it should have had roll down windows, but for some reason it yes. had that. And I yeah, was they, they, the, the factory put a little plug in there because they didn't yep. want to make a different door panel. So they just put right. a plug in there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't have the plugs, but it was a 73, like it, uh, and a rally. It should have had rolling windows, but it didn't. And I remember mm-hmm. doing a bunch of research trying to figure that out. And I learned about the deputy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mitchell Smith, you're probably beyond my pay grade there. Building a 408 Magnum, stock EFI. Huh, I wonder how it'll like that. You probably need a tuner already. If I add a little cam duration. to add cam to get compression down? Add duration to get cranking compression back down with tight quench. Should detonation tolerance be similar? I can't answer that. I'm not smart enough. Um, You're probably on the right track, but yeah. um, It's dynamic compression, essentially. Um, I don't know, man. Ask someone smarter than me. 
Um, what did you think of that 66 Hemi Charger that didn't sell on Bring a Trailer? And I know what you're going to say, but go. Uh, friends don't let friends buy 66, 67 Chargers. It's screwed up, man. It's really screwed up. Okay, so short little story here. So we had a while, this is a while ago, like 10 years ago, we had two Chargers come in the shop like consecutively and they both need a bunch of work done. But the, the headlights is one thing. Like, I don't know if you, all of you understand how complicated the headlight system is on those. I do. There are, I think I counted, there's 18 different things that have to work perfectly for that to work. There's like three relays under the dash. There's like three up relays. limit, lower <laughs> limit. There's like the switch. Like everything has to work perfectly. So we brought this car in, got the headlights working. They work perfectly. Like, you know, work, 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 work. Guy comes in on Monday to come pick his car up. First thing you do, I want to see if the headlights work. Of course they don't work. Like everything is brand new. Of course it doesn't work. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, come back on Friday. We'll fix this. So we didn't even change anything. Tuesday morning, I come in up and down. Tuesday afternoon, up and down. Wednesday, up and down. Morning. Wednesday. Every single day till Friday. Every morning when I'm in the shop, I started the car up, did the headlights up and down. Every night when I came home, up and down. Comes in Friday morning. Guess what? They don't work. They don't work. And I just threw my hands up. I'm like, I'm not working one of these stupid cars again. So uh I, the connector under the battery is a big one big one wipes out um, turn signals too i did david honestly i didn't get a good look at that car um i, I can kind of do a deep dive on it. i mean like these videos have been so successful i may start doing a series on these like if there's cars you want to see me like dissect on bring a trailer or online like i am perfectly willing to do that because like i love doing that and it's a pretty easy video for me to get done and it's good content so yeah um i I, I may take a take a do a deep dive on that this week and really look, but like it takes me a while. Like I gotta I gotta spend like half hour on a car, really go through all the pictures and dive into it to really like have a good opinion on it. So, um, but yeah, I, I may I may try to do that this week. So I got a couple more Barrett videos I'm gonna post this week, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take a closer look at it. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty good, but you know it was bid up to I don't even remember and it didn't sell. Um, it was green, so there's that. <laughs> uh-huh oh nc john says uh vis-a-vis -vis our videos the less we see of you two the better show pictures of <laughs> break drums or something <laughs> nice. i don't blame any of you but like i'm not really sure how else to do it other than just put a yeah. dumb picture up or something but yeah. i don't know it's... Uh, when you guys watch my videos you know i'm usually not in them mm-hmm there are times usually driving sometimes i show myself working but Usually I don't. I'm still 20 minutes behind in the comments, and I apologize for that. I'll try to catch up. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, Ripper wanted to know if the 46RH transmission is any good for classic transplants. I can answer that question in my upcoming Magnum Swap video series. They work great in trucks and vans. They don't fit in cars as well, but it can be done. Um, you have to do the cross-member thing and uh, a little bit of clearancing here and there. But, yes, they, they do work quite well. They really do. The overdrive is great. But those transmissions suck. So, yeah, yeah. It, it really depends what you're putting it in. But if you're putting it in a car, like you have to do some serious torsion bar cross member modifications to make them clear. And the thing with that is, like, you got to be careful with that. Like, that is the integral structure of the car. And I mean, your entire front suspension, like, the torsion bars go into that. So if you don't do that properly, like, your car is going to twist in half. So like, <laughs> it's doable, but like. It's not, it's not for an amateur. It's not something to take lightly. Like you need to reinforce that area to make sure it's strong enough to do that. Depending on the car, you can get around it. Um, in e-bodies, what is it? I can't remember. Um, in my charger, I moved my whole engine forward an inch and it cleared without modifying that, the, the actual floor cross member. Um, mm -hmm. In some cars, it's right in the way. In some situations, you just trim some ear, uh, some braces on the transmission case and it works. All depends. NC John said we need to also uh, said we need to have some adult beverages and then tell them something. Work it on it. Me too. Howdy, Dr. Art. How's it going? No need to fear. The elusive banana is here. Banana, you haven't been here for like six months or something. Anyway, welcome back. Nice. Dog Lover TV has a 68 Plymouth Barracuda I love in Louisiana. I need help. Well, we're nowhere near Louisiana, so yeah. Oh, 67 Barracuda, even better. I love those cars, but yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, various questions about the plan for the Roadrunner. Um, I can tell you the stock wheel housings are going back in. I mean, they're already most of the way there. Um, well, and then the car, like, I mean, it's a wet noodle without those. I mean, they're pretty much a wet noodle with them. But, like, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the general plan is, is just to, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to, like, weld the sheet metal in right now. Like, not do, like, an incredible job with it. And then probably just try to drive it as is. But I said, I got to get that heavy motor. Um, and I'm working on that. So it was not... It was not part of the deal, but it's in a storage unit and I have first dibs on it. So I just got to get over there and get the motor and see what kind of condition it's in. Cause I've talked to, I'm trying to dig some history into it. Um, I have pictures of it. It was kind of tentatively for sale in 2017. So I have some pictures of it then it was together at that point. Um, but as with any Hemi drag car like this, like they got parked for a reason. I'm sure that motor blew up. I just don't know how bad it was blown up. So, right. and and that's yeah. the question. And and I did get the numbers matching transmission. I mean, it's a full built race transmission with a TCI shield on it. And mm -hmm. I was I was really surprised. I, I didn't realize it had the numbers matching transmission with it. When I saw that, that was really nice. So that gives me hope that maybe they did use the numbers matching engine um, when they raced it. And I'm really hopeful. And the fact that the chrome dome was up in the attic, yeah. you know, I found that like. I, when I go through a building, no stone gets unturned. Like I went through every nook and cranny of that shop to find every part for that car. And the fact that the chrome dome in there is a good a good sign. Like usually when you see a, a drag car like that, all the original stuff's gone. You know, the carbs are gone, the exhaust manifolds are gone. And like, and I mean, I'm sure you guys know know some about Hemi's, but like an original set of exhaust manifolds is fifteen hundred dollars. Like carburetors are fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. Like Having that stuff is very valuable. It's like it's really hard to find that stuff. And on a drag car, a lot of times that stuff just got tossed. So, yeah. Today's tech question from Bill Johnson. Cornet idles okay, accelerates okay, but it absolutely hates light throttle cruise. Stumbles like crazy. Um, lean um, or advance? Possibly both. Um, yeah. I don't... Hmm. I don't know if we've talked about your carburetor setup. I can't remember. Um, I could try and give you some advice, but first I might have to hear it. And yeah, it's so much easier if I can actually like touch it, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, timing and carb tune. Tom or, or both. How long have you been restoring Chrysler products? You've got some incredible memorabilia and literature on these cars. Uh, a long time. So, I mean, I started, uh, I graduated college in 2002 and got a real job for a couple of years and working in a cubicle was not for me. It didn't last very long. So I started, uh, my first business was called um, Tall Zag. Um, I'm, I'm tall and went to Gonzaga University. So Tall Zag. Um, I ran that for like three, four years. And then uh, a guy named Mike ran Rocket Restorations down Olympia. And then we we merged businesses together basically. And then he got burned out you know, like seven, eight years ago and sold the business to me. So I've been doing this since like the early mid two thousands, but I had a charger in high school. I mean, I was, I just started doing it professionally in the mid two thousands. So, but I've been around Mopars my whole life. Oh, uh, <laughs> Dave, have you worked on the 64? That's my power wagon without me. Thank God. I'm still finding mud in my ears. No, I haven't touched it since the last day you were here. <laughs> Um, maybe I knocked another piston out of it. Maybe, but I don't think so. Howdy Snoopy boobs. What is up? God, that's a great username. Wish I'd thought of it. Oh, well, there, 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 there's a lot of good questions coming up, but I'll try to good. keep them in chronological order. Awesome. Just easier. So I'm, I'm scrolling down. We're getting there, getting there. Oh my goodness. Oh, Hey. Uh, oh, 143 of you out there. If you haven't hit like, please do that and ask your questions. I might actually get to them. And um, my sister says, if anyone doesn't have Dead Dodge Garage merch yet and is curious about quality, I have acquired some and can confirm it is top tier. The hoodies are very soft. Um, they are, I can't tell you what brand they are. I have no idea. I'd have to look at one. Um, I don't make them. They're made by a third party, but we... It, <clears throat> insisted on quality stuff. Uh, they really are nice. So just saying, uh, deaddodgegarage.com and click the button that says merch and there are shirts there. And um, thanks, I think. Oh, I've got Hemi in here and he just farted and dude, it's awful. Like, oh my God, like it's, it's bad. Thanks for letting us know. Appreciate that. Oh, 
I'm going to be muffled for a little bit here. 68 Valiant. Are upper control arms worth it for a daily? Everything else is dialed. I'm assuming you're saying uh, tubular. Personally, I don't think it is. Sway bar, good bushings, good alignment specs, good tires. Leave it alone. I, I, I'm, I'm, de I'm definitely a little conflicted about the tube over control arms. I mean, it's one of those things where it's They're like good. on that 73 Charger we're doing, mm -hmm. the, the Petty Blue Charger. Like, we did it on that, but it was kind of just a cost equation. It was like, I kind of did the cost of like, what's going to cost to like blast these and paint them and put new bushings in. And, you know, we're not doing a stock restoration on that. You know, we upgraded the sway bar. We upgraded a bunch of stuff on that. And it was just like, you know what? I'm just going to buy them because the cost yeah. is about the same, maybe yeah. a little bit more. And, you know, and they, they have a little more, you know, they, they, they tweak them a little bit and they have the yeah. opposite control arm bushings and all that fun stuff. And they're, so, they're um, better. There's no question they're better, but like for a street car, mm, it doesn't make a ton of difference. It really, yeah. Doesn't. Um, and, never, and they are lighter a little bit too, but again, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It really yeah. Doesn't. I don't, I don't think so. If you want to go all out, if you want to get every single bit of performance you can, sure. Rooster. I'm sure. I'm, yeah. What did I miss? <laughs> oh, yeah, let the nitromethane flow. Tom blamed the dog. Nice. <laughs> uh, nice. Uh, oh, here's a question. Snowmuck VX, how's it going? Another name I recognize but haven't seen for a while. Hi, Emmy. What are you doing? He's a little gassy. That's it's all right. Sense. He's taking a nap. Um, 91 B250 Dodge Van. Looking to swap from 39 V6 to a 360 for some towing power. Items needed for the swap, transmission, drive shaft, PCM and harness, cheers. Um, okay, so in 91, your 360 would be TBI. If you want to stick with TBI, you can, um, I guess. Uh, the harness is basically the same. The PCM program is different. So, yeah, you change the computer. Um, the transmission behind the V6, I'm sure, is going to be the little tiny... Oh, uh, the 904 based one, and you probably want a bigger transmission, the 46RH or the A518 or whatever the heck they call it, the beefier one. Probably a good idea. Um, rear axle, I think, is going to be an eight and a quarter, and honestly, you're probably there, fine there, unless you're going to tow a lot. Um, yeah, I, if you have the dinky transmission, you may well want to go to the bigger one. I think if you have a V6, yeah, but it's a 250. You might already have the 727 base, the bigger transmission. Um, and if you do, I think I'd leave it be. That's probably fine. Um, big transmission cooler is a good idea. And um, yeah, if you want to go carbureted 360, you could do that. Or you could up, jump up to a Magnum. You have to upgrade to a higher pressure fuel pump and change wiring, computer. Um, there you go. It's pretty easy to do. What do you know? What did I miss? Just reading some of the the heavy fart comments are pretty funny. Yeah. I'm still laughing. The joke was from two minutes ago. I'm still laughing. Not good. <laughs> the farts were the jokes. Uh, <laughs> um, Snoopy Boobs asking about C body, B body. If you're talking about arms, no, no idea. What's the question? I'm not sure. <laughs> Screw you, man. I don't know what I did to Dave. Oh, I'm, yeah, okay. I'm not going to touch the 64 power wagon until it gets back. <laughs> mm -hmm. 66 Charger is the best muscle car ever. I used to own one. It's right there. I really like them. I don't know if it's the best muscle car ever. Um, they're a great personal luxury car. Look, I, really cool. I, I like 66, 67 Chargers. It's just mm -hmm. like they just way over engineered them to the point of a fault. And sure. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm trying to buy. I'm trying to buy two right now. I know I. Trying to buy a three, three, four speed car in Iowa right now, and a three eighteen car, and I already bought a fifty seven Plymouth convertible from the guy. It's like I'm trying to buy one, but it's like, man, I, I just I don't like working on those cars. It's not it's not fun to work on those cars. So it's, it is what it I is. I think it's fun. Mm. Well, <laughs> you know what? Next time we come in, it's all you, man. <laughs> it's all you. <laughs> I've I've fixed rotating headlights and gauge lighting and. And anyway, flickering gauge uh, back backlights. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. howdy, Flaco. How's it going? I still haven't gotten into the new cider you sent. Maybe next weekend. I decided to be coherent tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How am I doing? <laughs> Pretty good. 
I, I, the, there haven't been too many Dead Dodge Garage uh, drinking game so far. So, mm, yeah, well, um, uh, I'm going to answer this question, but first, I just noticed my present. Uh, I have to show this. So, my coworker Evan uh, at Rocket brought me a present, a few presents actually. Found these at the swap meet this week. Drag racing rules from 1972, which I thought really, really cool. And it wasn't until I got home that I realized. Oh, 1972 would have been when Dale was reading the rule book to build my demon. So that's why it has to be this one. It's awesome. What year did he set the record? We didn't set a record, but he won class at um, Winter Nationals. Oh, I thought he he set a record. Okay. No, no, but he won uh, B stock? East? I don't remember what classes. I have it written down somewhere. Anyway, um, but Evan also found a patch from the 75 fall nationals, but most importantly, these, and if you know Dale's demon really well, you know that these are the exact stickers that are on the fenders of that car. 75 fall nationals. I believe that's the race where he blew up the 340. So cool. All right. Stacy's question. Would the rear quarters on a 75 Coronet four door be the same as wagon? Just need the lower portion from the door back driver's side rear on the wagons. Pretty Swiss cheesy. As far as I know, yes, behind the door. I think that area would be the same. At the very back, it's probably going to be different. But that lower section, I think, would be the same. How are you multitasking right now? I'm amazing. Where is Addy Washington? Is that in the top right corner? That's a good question. I don't know. Any town in Washington that I don't know the name of, I just assume it's in northeastern Washington. Uh, It's by Colville. Is that in northeastern Washington? <laughs> yeah, Chilua, Colville, it's way over there. Yeah, sounds right. Anyway, Tom just linked me to a 70 dart swinger, which... You know, one of those would make a great lemons car. I really like a 70 dart. That would be a great lemons car, by the way. If I get a 70 swinger, it is not a race car. I have the 72 here. You just got the nose. Let's do it. I already volunteered it once, but the Polaris seemed cooler. Yeah, well... When your brother's a little bitchy about how much he wants you to pay for it. (laughs) (laughs) Snoopy Boobs likes our dumb faces. (laughs) Oh, Wild Type Tarp Warrior has a green 66 and it's bloody beautiful. I agree. Again, I think they're really cool cars. Uh, Tom's just bitter because something about rotating headlights. Rooster wants you to explain the logistics of shipping a car. Frankly, I don't think it's all that complicated. He thinks it is, but I think you just have to know the right person to call, and then they just pick it up. Kind of. I mean, I should do a video on this because I know everybody always asks about it. Everybody's always intimidated. So basically what I do, there's there's basically like there's this secret message board. Like I'm not exaggerating. This is out there, but you have to be like a CDL driver to have access to it. Um, mm-hmm. I have friends who transport cars all over the country and you basically just post on there. And, but again, you have to be on the inside. You have to have a CDL. You have to be transported to get on this board. So I just have this broker I found years ago. He's a super, he's a nice guy. I mean, he's kind of a mover and shaker. He's out of Florida or Georgia or something. And he just posts my stuff online. I mean, he, he charges me a fee to do it, but he, like, if you go on like you ship or like one of those other ones, he's always like 25 to 50% lower than what the posted rates are in these other places. And I mean, it's usually, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's guys, most of the guys who show up don't speak English. So it's like, you kind of have to help them sometimes. They try to yep. winch it up by the sway bar. I mean, like, um, but he looks at reviews and make sure these guys, I've only had one car ever damaged shipping through this guy. And I shipped a lot of cars to this guy. Um, the only car I ever had damaged, I sold the 70 Super B to a guy in New York. It was a painted shell, but it didn't have shocks. And it was on top of the trailer enclosed. And it bounced into the roof going down the road because it didn't have shocks on it. I learned my lesson. Like, don't ship a car without shocks. Like, even if it's the crappiest shock you've ever seen in your life, you got to put shocks to ship a car. But it's really not too complicated. You just, you know, I I mean, there's different guys you can go through. Like, bring a trailer has a shipping service now. You ship up as a shipping service. You know, if everybody needs the number of my guy, just shoot me an email. Send me a message. I'll send it to you. He's a great guy. Guy's name's Alan. I've shipped... I don't want to even want to say it. a lot yeah, of cars, yes. like probably 40, 50 cars to this guy. And I've sent him to all my friends. Like I've never, I've, the only, I only had a problem one time and it wasn't totally the guy's fault because the car didn't have shocks on it. But like, you know, I'm, I, I got to ship a car to rooster next week, but rooster, are you ready to ship it? Let me know. Um, 
it's like just over a thousand bucks from Seattle to, to Minnesota. It's open transport, but it's, I think it's 1200 bucks. I mean, it's like, that seems that's pretty so reasonable bad. to me. I mean, I mean, yeah. add up the diesel to drive out there, you know, Dude, it's I like, do it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it for 1200 bucks. Wow. Well, not in February, but that's a whole nother story. But wow. yeah. Um, I don't did that. Remi- the carrier's not speaking English saying reminds me when we shipped that, the 68 RT charger um, that Austin sold before we did his yeah. red 71 project. The guy that picked it up yeah. did not speak a word of English, but the weirder part was trying to like, he wouldn't, we couldn't figure out what language he did speak to like do translate or anything. <laughs> Super nice guy, you know, but couldn't, did not understand a word. Okay. Did not understand a word. And he clearly he'd done this a bit, but he wasn't fully on board with disabled car mm-hmm. and winching and all that. So we had to help him with that a good bit. But I remember we were standing in the trailer. Evan was like grabbing the wall plug in winch or something. We're standing in his trailer and he looks at the car and he says, Oh, Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. That's awesome. Uh-huh. But I mean, like, it's all about who you know. Like, I mean, there's the big brands out there. So, like, you know, I, I took my rotor and a Macacken this year. I don't know if any of you guys watched that video, but, um, you know, I got a, a quote from Reliable Auto Shippers in closed transport from Western Washington to Chicago, and it was $6,000. And I used my guy, and it was like $3,500. It was like half as much in closed trailer back and forth. I mean, it was still a ton of money to go to Macacken, but I really wanted to show that car off and get it in some magazines. So I thought it was worth bringing it back there. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, do you think manual valve bodies are worth it? No. And the funny thing is I, I ended up in an internet war over this for some reason. Uh, some guy on the internet thought that every single car ever made, every grandma car, every pickup truck, they all need full manual valve bodies. Um, no, I, I think that's silly. Uh, if you're building a race car, sure. Yeah, fine. But other than that, no. No, the kickdown works fine. <laughs> You know, I think it's kind of funny though. It's like you're driving the turquoise charger in your video, and you're manually shifting that. Yeah, <laughs> that and I'm manually funny. shifting my dart, but that's only because I haven't built it a kickdown linkage yet. Um, uh, my, my my opinion, man, of body, it's good for a race car. Like yeah. I, I wouldn't put it on the street. I, I've driven no. cars on the street with it. It's a pain yeah. in the butt. Like you know, we did it in our lemons car when we built it. We had yes. the automatic in it, and yeah, it's yeah. yeah unless it's unless it's a race car, no. Nah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Rooster, yes, Tom got all of the parts for the Roadrunner with the Roadrunner. Everything that was there came with it. Um, but yeah, only because he was those... able to say, hey, all of this is for this car. Well, I mean, obviously my knowledge kind of came yeah. into in, into play there, but like I am very careful with this stuff. Like, I mean, I went I made sure like there wasn't a preview. I went to the I made a preview. Like I'm telling, like, I'm interested in this car, I'm gonna bid on it. I'm going to go there. And I spent an hour and a half there going through every box, going through every shelf. And I've been to enough of these estate sales where I made sure I was the first one in Thursday. Like it sold on Wednesday or sorry, sold on Tuesday. I was there on Wednesday. The second the guy was available at like 1 PM. And I made sure I was the first one in that room because there was like the Dakota RT. There was some other stuff. None of those guys were taking my parts to that car. So Mm -hmm. I got there Wednesday, picked up the car the next day, Got all the parts loaded. I went through every shelf in that shop. There's a bunch of dart parts. I ended up buying the dart parts anyways. But like, mm-hmm. I went through every box and every shelf in that shop. And I made sure every part came home with that car. And I made sure I had it in writing from them during the preview that all the parts went with that Roadrunner. So okay. it's like, so yeah, I mean, there's a chance some of the parts could have gone missing. And there's still some stuff in storage I need to get. I'm trying to get access to that right now. But like, I made sure I got all the parts to that car. The, yep. the it's a long answer to a short question, but I yeah. made sure I got all the parts. Yes. Yeah. so it's the good, it's the right answer. Um, yeah. Okay, Bill Johnson, that Cornet's a stock BBD. May have done something stupid. I have done plenty of stupid things before. I wonder if your um, the piston, the needle piston, is moving freely. I wonder if maybe it's sticky and that's messing up the the cruise fueling. Or, but I guess it would just be lean. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Make sure the piston's moving in your BBD, but it probably is. You probably would have noticed if it was stuck. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to think about that some. Uh, Snoopy Boobs. I've never done a, a leaf spring relocation. I never have. I don't know why. I never have. Um, I don't think it's that bad. 
hopefully your MIG welding uh, at medium quality is good enough. Old Plymouth Garage wants to know, any recommendations on a budget-minded set of small block A-body headers? I know the answer. Do you know the answer? What? The answer is no. There's no such thing. <laughs> well, uh, I, I just picked up three sets from that estate sale. So if I don't know where you live, Old Plymouth Garage, but I just picked up three sets of headers. I mean, they're they're old headers. They're not going to fit that well. Some of them have like scrapes on the bottom, but I will sell them for very reasonable if you're a local. But shipping those things is a nightmare. I don't want to ship headers. So if they are the type where three tubes come down and wrap under the steering, you don't want them. Just don't do it. Don't. It's not worth it. That's what you're going to get if you get any affordable set of A-body headers. That is what you're going to get. They are absolute junk. You don't want to do that. They become a skid plate immediately on the street. If you're racing the car, okay, fine. You know, drag racing. I wouldn't go around corners like that because I have scraped headers on the ground <laughs> aggressively cornering before. Um, I've bottomed out on manhole covers, driveways. Yeah. Unless you're going to jack the nose of your A-body like a foot into the air, just don't bother. It's TTI or Doug's or don't bother, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Mr. Snoopy Boobs to you. Nice. Nice. Uh, Snowmunk, as you've probably seen on the channel, I have done some first-generation Charger content. I will do more. I'm going to do an update on my old car that Dave has when I get a chance. Um, I like those a lot. Uh, I think it's uh, Kinger's Garage. Uh, can't join in on the drinking game. I'm watching this at work tonight, and apparently they frown on me drinking at work. <laughs> yeah, I'm at work. <laughs> Mark, well, you're in work. Um Taking care of my two children by myself without my wife. It's it's all good. I'm sure they're fine. It's, uh, yeah, anyway. Mark Norman it's says, my probably can't take alcohol like it used to could. No DDG drinking games for me. All good. Nice. Uh, HDF2 says, uh, what up, DDG? After watching your Charger videos, I'm trying to avoid the temptation to search for one. Damn cool cars. Thanks for taking us along for the rides, wrenching on them. Happy to do it. Uh, no, you don't want to buy one. They're stupidly expensive. You will spend all your Insane. time staring at it, thinking it's the most beautiful thing in the world and how much money you could have if it left. Does that sound right? That's why mine went to Germany. I got offered enough money where it's like, I can't justify this anymore. So yeah. Knowing what and they're then saying. I bought a six pack roadrunner with the money. So yeah. You know. Right. What are the rules to this so-called dead Dodge garage drinking game? Yes, I used to cover this a lot. Anytime I misspeak, I say something patently untrue, or I notice how far behind in the comments I am, nine minutes right now, or I do commenter voice. Um, I did commenter I like, voice. What's that? I feel like Kaylin should, should probably it, yeah, my the one sister, who kind of set the rules. So. Yes. My sister is basically in charge of the rules. Um, so there you go. You can ask her, but that's most mm. of them. Uh, there, there've been a couple other limited edition rules, but yeah, it's fine. Mm. Uh, David Bizet, any more progress on your brother's fury and where could I find an ashtray for my 68 satellite? You got a pile of ashtrays? I do. I probably have one. Tom at rocketresto.com. He'll take your money. No I problem. I have more 68 to 70 V body stuff than any other stuff. So I have, I think I have a whole shelf with like 15 dashes up there. I'm, of course, I say that and I'll probably go up there and every ashtray is missing, but I do have a pile of ashtrays. I probably have yeah. one. So, ah, and we need to know if it, uh, if you should have the slidey style or the flip out style, because I thought all 68s were the sliding ones, but they're not. Well, this rally and non rally is different too. So, oh, yeah, right. That makes sense. But, but if it's there satellite, this... it should be non-rally. So one more time, it's that right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Does the yeah the Hemi Roadrunner is a sliding one, even though it's non-rally. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't been. I'm not. I'm still not clear on that. Like, do you know anything about that? You know, a lot of '68 stuff has that sliding um, ashtray. Like that's what my charger has. I don't. I've never. 
I'm the kind of person where I just do a deep dive on something every once in a while and I'll remember for the rest of my life. I've just never gone deep dive into ashtrays. So yeah. I, I I don't know. I mean, I, I could find out. I have enough from around here I could find out. But, right. Um, but I don't yeah. have the top of my head. I'd like to know that. I'm just curious if it's a production date thing, a plant thing or what. But I thought they were all slid. I mean, a body rally dash is a sliding one too. I don't remember 68 standard dash, but I think it is. I think all 68A is a sliding dash too. Um, Alice here wants to know how your puppy is doing. Yeah, he lost his German Shepherd before Christmas. I remember that. Oh, I went from saying never bad, again yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we we lost our golden. We had Joey um, before yeah. Christmas, and my wife was really missing missing him. So we got another puppy around Christmas, but he's doing great. He's like tripled in size and a little gassy obviously but he's doing great so he's been doing i just have a little enclosure in my office where he kind of hangs out most of the day because i gotta get some work done like and he's a puppy i can't i can't leave him loose then he tries to eat everything right now so um but he's doing good he's a good boy so yeah um i'm gonna put this on the board snoopy boobs is a comment rock star I'll, let's just say that yeah see that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gary says stuff always disappears at estate sales. Got to make sure you get everything you bought. Yeah, I, I went with a friend to an estate sale once, and he like started taking all other people's stuff, and I'm just like, that's kind of shitty. Like it's, you know, I, I I've seen it happen, and it's like I've been to enough estate sales where it's like you got to be there, you got to protect your stuff because no one else You're is going to. So the asset. Um, it, yeah, in fact, I'll I really call out Rooster on this. He he really helped me last year. There was a, a dealership in Minnesota. I actually tried to buy out several times, and they ended up doing a public auction for it. And luckily, it was like 20 minutes from Rooster. And I bought a bunch of stuff at that auction, a bunch of lots. And I knew stuff wouldn't would have gotten lost, and he knew the guy. So Rooster went down there the next day and picked up all that stuff for me. And I really appreciated him doing that for me. That was hugely helpful. So Nice. Um, Nick Dirkitz wants to know, and I've had a few questions on this. Are you keeping the Roadrunner, or is it strictly a business venture? Um, well, I'll, I'll kind of give you guys an exclusive here. Um, I really wanted to do something at Roadrunner and keep it, but uh, Trev, who works for me, he's wanted a Hemi car for a long time, so I'm pretty sure it's going to go to Trev. It's not. I'm basically selling it to him for pretty close to what I have into it. Um, but he and, and he. He's a metal guy. I'm not. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, he'll do all the He metal. can fix it all himself. Yep. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure it's going to go to Trev. We haven't quite finished the deal yet, but that's my guess. But I will. It's going to stick around here. Trev rents a shop on my property. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's literally it's not leaving. fifty feet we're, that way. We're going to. It's going it. to be here. And he says I can drive it whenever I want. That's part of the deal, which is definitely part of the deal because yeah. I want to drive it whenever I want. He um, said it was a race car. Let's put it back together and go racing. Like. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, again, I, I don't really want to post that online because like then people get all weird about that kind of stuff, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it's going to go to Trev and that's really a good home for it. Trev is very detail oriented with the stuff. You know, he's our, he's our detail guy. He's our assembler or disassembler. He does windows. He's what he's really talented at. He's a pretty good paint and body guy too. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to end up with Trev. So I think that's the plan. He's going to put the metal back together and then, you know, if we can't get the Hemi out of storage, he'll find another one to put in there and, you know, kind of, kind of go from there. So, yep. I mean, he took one look at it and said, man, we're going to save these quarters. We'll just graft in the sections that are missing. It happens. I forgot, but I have panels for one in my storage unit. So we might you may end need up those. Well, and, and if you guys watched my Hemi video, I know a lot of you did. Like, there's he's in that video. We're all kind of all looking at it, Evan, Jamie, and, and Trev, and me. And Trev's like joking, he's gonna buy it. And like, yeah, yeah. he wore me down to a nub. So but we'll yeah. see. But it's not going anywhere. And like, and I have a deal with Trev. And same thing, if I buy some from him, you buy some from me. Like, if he ever sells that, I'm gonna get first dibs on it. Yeah. So, um, so, but. I, I think that's the plan for now. So I'm yep. not just going to flip it. That's not my plan. And the thing with that car is like, in fact, you can, he's grinding on it out there. I don't know if you hear that. He's actually out there really? right now. Yes. <laughs> At um, seven o'clock on a Sunday. He's a night owl. That's kind of how he works. Um, wow. But he's literally grinding on the metal right now. So, but wow. I mean, the thing with that car is like, you can't, even if I wanted to just flip it and sell it right now, like you can't sell it as is like, you got to get no. the metal back together. Like, when they put that car together, you know, like I was going to say this in the video, but I didn't really want to embarrass the family. So it's like, I didn't really want to say that, but like, I know what they paid for that. I know what they put in the metal work and it sold for a significant amount of money below that. And I just want to let everybody here know that like, that's a really good lesson for 
when you work on a car like don't take it apart like until you're ready to finish it like if you take it apart that car no matter how much money you put into it it is worth less now than when it was together no matter what you do no matter what the car is like that they probably lost half the value to that car just by replacing the shemale and not finishing it if the shemale was finished that car would have gotten a lot more money and it just wasn't it just didn't get finished for whatever reason so it's not even the sheet metal, but but taking a car apart at all. And it's not just Hemi cars. I mean, that Dart I just bought last week that I drove today, a week ago, it was in a pile of pieces and nearly worthless. It had been yep. listed for sale multiple times. Mm -hmm. No one bought it. I messaged the guy. I talked to him on the phone. I was the guy. There weren't people lined up around the block to get it. I mean, it's a horrible, it's a pile of pieces, right? It is not worth what it would be as a whole car put back together as a car hey now you got something so yeah i mean it's it's yeah. don't take cars apart that's the lesson anyway well i mean you can take a car apart but you got to put it back together like if you take it apart it's gonna sit for a couple years it's never coming back apart like <clears> you <throat> just i I've, I've been through this in my, i can't tell you how many cars we've had in here that somebody right. took apart we have to put together and like you know there's the t-shirt where it's like you know hundred dollars an hour if i'm working on it 150 dollars if you worked on it yeah that's totally true like we get a car in here that someone else yeah. took apart and it takes us twice the time to do that car than if we took it apart because nothing's bagged and tagged, like pieces are lost. Like we got to come up with all that stuff. I mean, it's lucky I'm a hoarder that I have so many parts here. That I mean, that's one reason we're really good at what we do because we have parts cars. I have a ton of parts here, but it's like, you know, we're, we're putting the, the 73 Charger, you know, I was going to have Jamie put the gas tank in last week. Well, I forgot to order gas tank straps. Well, there's another freaking week. It's on the lift while I'm waiting for gas tank straps because there's no point in putting the gas tank in with the old straps. So then you just got to replace them the next week. So it's like now I'm waiting for gas tank straps and it's it costs us time and money when it's sitting on the lift. And if you lose those parts, that's what always happens. Yep. Oh, Lee Houston has TTIs on all three of his cars. Unholy expensive, but worth every dime. Yes, it is. That's what I have on the Demon. I didn't have to buy them myself. Really glad. They're like $1,000 now. It sucks, but they fit and they don't leak. And they don't scrape. That's what you need. That's you know, I, I, I could not agree more. Other than the, the big block early A body headers, I, I will curse those. Oh, God. Um, yeah. We did that one yeah. time. I'll never do it again. Um, but like, for example, on Austin 71 Challenger, the 392 Hemi, those were TTI headers. Man, Beautiful. just like a glove. Just went right fantastic. in. It was fantastic. Like, Dude, it, they went it was right great. in. The only yep. I had to dent one of them around the, um, the T56 bell housing. Because why would you have a T56 full round bell housing? That's not supposed to be there. If I if we'd yep. used a standard Chrysler uh, bell housing, it never would have been yep. a problem. So yep. yeah, other than that, they fit mm. perfect. They're super, super nice. Um, yep. Greg Smelly, I hope, uh, said use 7071 HP manifolds. Well, if we're talking small block, there are no HP manifolds. Well, there are the well, 340 think... manifolds. Jay, I think you missed a question. Somebody's asking where to find cheap HP manifolds. And the que and the answer is you can't. Um, well, yeah. uh, and Tony D'Agostino, Tony's Parts, is actually making them, but they're not cheap either. They're like yeah. four or 500 bucks for a set, I think. Yeah, so I see just, that lower. There aren't any awesome. cheap. Yeah, and, and the one thing you really want to want to keep an eye on, though, is you block. really have to. No, I didn't miss yeah, that. I, yeah, I thought it was still I about think he's talking about big block. I thought we were still talking about the A-body small block. But, yeah, maybe I missed something. But, yeah, anyway. Um, one thing to always check for on those two is like it's kind of a misnomer that the, the, the C bodies are different on the driver's side and the passenger side is all the same. But so you think that the passenger side would be easier to find because they're the same for B body and C body and everything else and E body. The problem is the passenger side always cracks. You always have to look on the inside between the, the middle two ports. That's where they always crack. So if you're ever at a swap meet looking at HP manifolds, make sure you look really closely at that area. I've had a ton that crack in the area. They, they lean out and get really hot there and they crack. Mm. Of course, we had one recently that was cracked next to the um, heat heat flapper too. Yeah, the Challenger. Yeah, you know, passenger side. HP I still got, got to find manifolds for that. There's a pretty good chance I have to set up back, but I haven't looked. Yeah. Well, you had three sets of cylinder heads to choose from. Uh, mm. Anyway, we'll see how long Johnson's takes to get to that. Oh yeah. Well, you know, like I told him, the car's been in part for how long? Let's not talk. Let's move on. Yeah. Anyway, um, a week or two would be great. <laughs> How do you functional histories? Apparently, he just dropped in, but something about a headache or a migraine. Excuse me. Good luck with that. 
Uh, have you ever had trouble with clutch linkage and headers on small block stuff? Oh, God, yes. You get those good TTI headers that stay away from the ground. Hey, suddenly they're right in the way of all the clutch linkage. So there's a special TTI, TTI Z bar to dodge that. And on small block, it works. On big block A body, uh, like Tom was alluding to a minute ago, it's still a horrible nightmare, even if you buy all the TTI stuff. Um, the small block TTI okay. bell crank stuff does, it clears. You have to buy their, their Z bar, um, but it's still almost impossible to adjust. Like, just terrible. Terrible. Well, we just did one. We just did a, a CUDA with a big block, 68. And mm -hmm. yeah, we had way too much time we actually ended up having to use a different down rod to make the to make the ratio work right to, to clear because it was hitting the starter it wasn't even hitting the headers it was hitting the starter actually yeah. with the with the tti special z bar but yeah, yeah that was yeah. that was not fun so yeah but yes i did figure out later that they recommend this really goofy small starter it's not the normal mini starter it's some crazy expensive special thing that's supposedly shaped just perfectly it's just nuts Gary Herger drove the Charger 500 to work today. Had to stand back and stare at it for a minute before I got in and left. Ah, so cool. I've had a clip of that car on the channel twice, I think. I really want to do something with that. Yeah, and that's, he's talking about, it's a 69 Charger 500 to the NASCAR yeah. version. And yes. <laughs> uh, not, not to spoil the surprise, but I'm pretty sure that's coming in here pretty soon. So he's, Gary's going to, he, he's gone to every wing car reunion with that down in Talladega, like driven cross country from Washington down there. He put, I think seven or 8,000 miles on that car like five years ago. So he wants to drive it cross country and it's blown smoke pretty bad. So I think that may be coming in here this spring for a full engine tear down and rebuild. So, cause it's just time. It's just tired. It was all done in the eighties and everything's just really tired on it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I, I enjoy doing these stock builds. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We need to find a cam for that. You should start looking right now, Gary, because we yeah. need to find a cam for that. Yeah. Of our performance, um, I'm sure. You, yeah, they they sold the HP grind. I know they did. We've gotten them before. Mm -hmm. We put one in. Uh, yeah, that's what we put in the wagon motor. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Yeah, I found. Do I still have the NOS one, or do we put that in Daytona? We might have put that in the Daytona because I, I I found two of them on Facebook Marketplace. I think we put the other one in the Daytona. So yes, we did. Yeah, you've got the other the tiny uh, the Howards. You got a Howards. But we ended up using the, the NOS cam instead. All Classics Restoration's 68 Coronet has the slidey type ashtray. Yep. Oh, dang it. I forgot. Um, oh, also, hi, Mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot that was a two-part question a bit ago about, about Colin's Fury. Uh, yes. So he found um, – he, he's doing all kinds of nice little stuff. He replaced the battery tray, which is like – doesn't even seem like the kind of thing he would do. <laughs> But uh, he sent pictures. Really? Yeah, I know. And it's got, hold on, this is going to blow your Isn't mind. Isn't that what a piece of wood's for? This is going to blow your mind. Okay, look at this. It's got a new battery tray and a battery hold down. It's amazing. Wow. It's even the nice. right, it's even the right one. It's the offset factory one. It's cool. You, you know what's going to happen? He's going to put all this time and effort into it. And it's going to be one of the brand new parts he puts on it that's going to break on the trip. It's going to be a brand um, new parts store part that his, breaks. His brand new alternator. Uh, oh, done. Oh, he, that's never going to last the trip. We you already had more of that once. No, his brand new voltage <laughs> regulator. Uh, well, it died, but allegedly it might have been his fault. Warranted out for a new one. Fixed the original problem. The new one worked for a day. Died. Uh, then he got one from AutoZone. And it's the cheap plastic one. And the cheap plastic one works. Anyway. This is, he is actually fixing the floor. So as my mom says, the new wow. floor panel is on the way. If you guys haven't seen it in the video, that floor is made out of pieces of like a Velari hood or something. And it is terrible. It's all riveted together. Um, there's the original. No, that's more patches. Anyway, that's the shift hump. He's had that shift hump for like four or five years. It doesn't fit because the floor is so bad. So he's got to put a whole floor in and then he can have a shift hump. Uh, but... The early B fours have been hard to find. He found the sixty four Plymouth parts guy and ordered all the trim clips he's missing, an entire AMD floor, and I don't even know what bunch of other little things. And it's all getting shipped from the middle of the country. So there will be more coming on that. He's actually kind of making that car less garbage. Mm hmm. 
new flooring in the Fury will will be great. Yes, and I imagine he will be doing a video on a full floor panel re uh, replacement. And I'm sure Birdsong's probably done it, but you know, there you go. Simpsons did it. Simpsons already did it. Yeah. Is there a big difference between the 71440 HP exhaust manifolds and the 73? As far as I know, they're very similar. There, there's a little ridge on the seven and the 72, the 73, 74 one. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as I know, well, no, they are different. It's a smaller opening on the later one. So it's a full two and a half inch in 71, and it's two and a quarter, 72 to 74. They look very similar, though, but it is different. Yes. Um, we did that on the, the 73 charger. Um, we, 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 we put the bigger one on the one side. So yep. it's two and a half inch. Well, and those. Are those the cars that have a non HP on the right? A lot of them do, and I don't know why. Like my, my 72 Polara, the U code uh, police car, has a 440 HP and it has an HP on the passenger side, but a non HP on the other side. And I don't know if that was just, they were just too lazy to get the exhaust around the, the torsion bar. It's really tight in there on a 70, 69, 70, 71. Um, mm. But for whatever reason, that's what they did. So well, I don't that's, know why. I think that's how the Charger, or no, it was a 402 barrel. So it probably didn't have HP manifolds at all. We put HP. Yeah, it was on. logs. Yep, it yeah. was a two barrel. It, it probably would have, but yeah. it might have had the HP and the non HP. I'm, I'm not sure why they did that, but they did that. Did. Smog motors. But yeah. Anyway, we put HP manifolds on it. Yep. Um, any advice on freeing up the rear pop out windows on a '68 Super B? Mine are frozen solid. I don't want to break anything. Um, I mean, magic spray lube and a little bit of heat. That's really all you can do. WD-40 kind of sucks. I've been using PB Blaster lately for everything because um, uh, Dylan that owns the Dark Sport sent me a case of it for free with his car. And it's amazing. It works great. I've been using it on everything. Um, the adjustment on my uh, push button shift cable on the 63 was seized solid. A little bit of PB, a little bit of heat, and it came right free. So, um, yeah, obviously. Right, so are, you just talking about the, are you just talking about the latch? Because it's just the latch on there. So the latch won't mm -hmm. move. Right. Yeah, one huh. latch. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, obviously, you're going to be inside the car. You don't want to light it on fire. You don't want to put a bunch of heat into your glass, but a little bit of heat, a little bit of heat, and uh, and try some better spray. A little bit of percussive maintenance can work too, but again, glass, <laughs> so don't go wailing on it, but a couple taps might help free it up. You know, on the pin that goes through it, a couple little taps, that's what I'd do. Nice. Semi-domesticated dogs are the best things Hemis, uh, humans ever did. I said Hemis. Yeah, we no tried worries. to put him in the engine bay of the Roadrunner to be a Hemi-powered Roadrunner. It didn't work. He was not having that at all. <laughs> no Beret says, great videos this week, guys. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks for joining Thanks, us. Man. Appreciate it. Why do so many people bypass the amp gauge? This is Jamie. Go. <laughs> because they're paranoid and stupid. Uh, because somewhere someone said, amp gauges light your car on fire. Now, what lights your car on fire is a short inside the alternate. And it happens. And um, yeah, it's not great. It almost burned my 73 Challenger to the ground. That's exactly what happened. It cooked the wiring back to the amp gauge. Um, it's possible to have a short of the amp gauge. It's not, it doesn't, as long as it hasn't been tampered with, it, it won't. Usually the failure mode for the amp gauge is an internal break and you just lose all power. But for some reason, lots and lots of people think that the amp gauge lights people's cars on fire and it's a hot fire hazard and you need to bypass it. It's just like one of those things that's very prevalent in the hobby. And it's, it's, I don't think it's, there's any validity to it at all, but yeah. It's one of those pieces of knowledge. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to drink. People believe things, and believing things makes them true. Um, now, there is a, a modicum of truth to the issue. If you put a big, gnarly alternator on there, now you are outclassing the amp gauge and the wires that go to it and the firewall connection, and you're going to ruin everything. So that's where the bypass comes in. But what I do is add an extra circuit and leave the amp gauge in the circuit. You you put a heavier duty charge wire on to take the load, right? Leaving the gauge in place. I've done that many times. It's never been a problem. Um, so yeah, uh, m mainly bad information and a misunderstanding of how things work. 
How many hobby cars is reasonable? Asking for a friend. We are the wrong people to ask. Unless you have anything yeah, to ask. Don't ask me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, I had a guy come and look at a car yesterday, and he was from Vegas. He, he's buying the Polara, and his son was with him. He was nine. He's just like, yeah, we have 26 cars. How many do you have? I'm just like, I don't count because then I, I have to plausibly tell my wife how many cars are on the property. So I just don't count. Yeah. It's more than 26. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Mine's hovering about 20, but I don't have as much space as you, especially inside spaces mm. at a premium here. So, Well, that's why, it. you know, I mentioned earlier, Trev rents a shop for me. The reason I rented the shop out to Trev is because I knew I'd fill it if I didn't. So. Yep. Oh, yeah. Easy. No problem. Yeah, Rooster really, really wants the 70 Roadrunner for some reason. Yeah, he'll he give you, that. He'll give you lots of money and his firstborn. I don't want his firstborn. Sorry, he's a nice no guy. I just, yeah, I have enough yeah. kids. I have enough kids. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. I like driver projects. I don't trust myself to start from zero. That's half the point of my mm -hmm. channel. I've made a lot of different videos yep. talking about exactly that. Um, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's slightly ironic that I work at a restoration shop where we strip things down and restore the nuts and bolts and such, but, uh, it's a different thing, you know, the way, the way it works, you know, when someone's paying the bill for you to do it, if you're trying to do it for yourself, God, that's tough. Really tough. Four speed 440. What is up? That's a great handle. Really mm -hmm. good one. Yes. Early A's Pick should have small blocks. Anyone putting a big block in uh, in a, an early A body YT viewer is probably making a mistake. How do you Mexican spec? The fact that you're here probably means uh, Tony went off about 10 minutes ago. So welcome. And anyone else that hopped in? Oh, Chris Freemaster. Hey, Max, long time no see. Yeah, good stuff. Nice. Oh, uh, Banana went on a crazy road trip with the 68 3D3 four-speed charger, had to replace three fuel pumps, three head gaskets, and was stranded in rural California for a bit. Six months, though? Man. Anyway, um, I also want to ask you, is there right. anywhere I can find an aftermarket cassette tape player for my 68 charger? Who, who listens to cassettes anymore? Hmm. There, I mean, you can get a modern sound Bluetooth radio, but I don't know about a cassette player. Yeah, because that didn't come out till 71 from the factory. The the 73 Charger actually is a factory one, and we're planning on getting that working on it. Because that's 8-track, though. Oh, wait, well, it has cassette. Would be eight track. What's that? Yeah, the, the, the 71 is cassette player, yeah. It, oh, the that's Charger floor, mounted. Is floor mounted is cassette. Mm-hmm. I'll be damned. Yeah. In 69, you can get an 8-track. And I actually have I, I have three cars that have factory 8-track players. None of them run right now, but I have a lot of 8-tracks when I do get one finally running. So Nice. There's an 8-track mm -hmm. in my charger. It doesn't work. I'd like to fix it. But, yeah. Bill Johnson says there was a Charger 500 at, I'm still going to call it Griots on Saturday. Was it green? <laughs> it's probably a lolly. It's probably a brown one, be my guess. But who knows? Uh, Greg Ryan says, you, Tom, mentioned Dave Wise in your videos. He has nothing for A-bodies. Do you see that as a problem in the future? Those I mean, parts are getting scarce. He, he does. He keeps track of all of that stuff. I mean, he, I, mean I, I, could, I could spend an hour on this. I mean, he goes so deep diving into this stuff. I mean, he has the lot numbers off sheet metal. He pays attention to everything. He just doesn't do the books for them because it's not worth the time to put one together. So he does have information on them. He's done a bunch on trucks lately. Um, he's got a, he's got a couple of survivors like 70s trucks so he has the information he just hasn't released the books on it so I'm not too worried about it I mean he keeps track of that stuff you know obviously Galen's kind of fallen off the map he was the guy to do that forever and he really didn't care about any bodies but um but I've definitely seen Dave I mean I've seen him junkyard crawl where he takes pictures of survivors and stuff like he keeps that information I'm not worried about it that information's out there well there might be a book in the near future if they keep trading for over a hundred thousand dollars that's yeah. I mean, there were three six digit cars at Mecham. You know, the, the one I did the the video about the yellow one and then a black one and a pink one both got over a hundred thousand. So, I mean, that's yeah, wow. straight for a body. So no, I had a couple, I had a couple customers text me after that and be like, well, what's my car worth now? I'm like, right. I don't know, but more, <laughs> more. 
Don't remind me. Howdy, Barry, Barry Cuda. How's it going? Yeah, hopped in when Tony finished. Delta camshaft in Tacoma. Yes, we were talking about cams. Delta is still in business. They're awesome. Definitely take them your business. Uh, if you need a flat tap of cam, we haven't dealt with them yet. We've been getting the Mopar ones in boxes. We kind of like it. But um, the, the problem with that is it's not the cams that are the problem. It's the lifters, lifters. that are the problem. Well, I'm That's hoping the they reface lifters there. We need to confirm if they don't, Oregon Cams hopefully does. But yeah, again, it's the lifters that are the real problem. You need a good machine shop that can reface them. Yeah. <clears throat> Opinions on an 8.8 .8 in an A body. I'm looking for a cheaper end for my dart that will hold up to a 325, 350 horse, 360 Magnum. The Ranger ones fit without shortening, although less strong. Uh, I don't care how many splines it has. I'd do an eight and a quarter. The eight and a quarter holds up to a lot, a lot more than you'd think. And they aren't worth anywhere near what an eight and three quarter is. They bolt right in. If you're going to do a Ford rear end, then you're already going uh, big bolt. So that's what I would do. I've got one here. It's got four tens and it's available. Uh, excuse me. Good morning, Patrick Ramberg. How's it going? And Nick says, all hail the Mopar Jedi. <laughs> Nice. Um, do you guys have a rooster says, do you guys have a book that shows the casting numbers for my six pack 70 charger, Tom? For what specifically? Yeah. I mean, I've got all the game books. Parts. They have all the numbers in them. Yep. Engine parts. The yeah. Game I, I've got, I've got the books for that. I don't, I don't have that stuff memorized, but yeah, if you need help with that, just let me know rooster. I can help you out. Um, this is a good question, Fleetwood. This is something I keep seeing. I have a worn saddle on the yoke of a 742 8 and 3 quarter. The U joint has a couple foul play around the caps. I'd like to change it, but nervous about the bearings are messing something up. Stock 67 RT. Oh, uh, 67. The good thing is 67 should still be a shim axle. You shouldn't have a crush sleeve in there. So you should be good to just unbolt and replace the yoke. Seven, wait, 742. No, that is the later one, isn't it? Yeah. So that's crushing. No, no, 49 is the later one. It, it's still 49. Like, the, the, hard yeah. part, the hard part with that is getting the torque right because it is right. a huge torque number. Um, it's really seven, hard to get the torque right. Now, 742 is only because that's what I just did, right? That's only 160. The tapered, I'm pretty sure 742 is the tapered pinion. You and just, only it was a 741 in the charger, but it's the same. What's 741 and 42 have the same style. So, well, there's a tapered and a straight. Um, Anyway, it's either one, eight, there are three different specs. One of them's like 160 or 70. One of them's like 210. And then the other one's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, you should, if you're a 742, that's the shim axle. So you're fine to just change out the yoke. You can just change it out. No problem. If it was a crush sleeve axle, that would be a different story. But as long as you've got a torque wrench and a means of holding the car still while you torque it, you know, uh, someone standing on the brakes or something, um, you should be okay. Just replace it. But yeah, I've been seeing play around caps. And I don't know if it is just down to wear or if it's a machining issue on these U-joints. I don't know. But it's something I keep seeing. Like every single mail truck has that problem on new uh, rebuilt axles. So, yeah. Yes. Oh, my mom's looking forward to my brother doing the Fury 4 because then she can have a seat belt. Yes, that'll be nice. He felt so good. I don't think PB Blaster smells that bad. Um, I used to use um, Free All. It smells way worse. And Croil is the best. Croil also has a smell. You know, the thing, Bo, is the thing is, Bo, the worse it smells, the better it works. So it's important to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Totally. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, Pro Paul Croil is still around. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> Mr. MSN says, ha, you guys work together all day, but still find worthy content for a YouTube show match made in heaven. <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, except for, except for he's been posting everything before I do like a day before lately, but not that I care about that at all. Oh, oh, <laughs> should I remind the people that I made a Meekum auction video like two years, a year and a half ago? <laughs> Um, and, and the you know, you had a to chance do... to run with it and you didn't, so I'm taking no, and, well, but, and, but And here's the thing I, I did a video about a good car, it didn't do well at all. That's not what the people want. The people at your mm -hmm. style of video, I think, is working really well for you, but 
what they seemed to want from me was more criticism, you know, nightmares and crappy cars and overpriced junk. And so I went looking for that. I've looked at a ton of auction ads, uh, listings. I've never found another one like that car. If I do, I'll do a video, you know? Um, but yeah, just, well, just the, um, there, there's that trail duster from Barrett, which I'm doing a video on this weekend. That thing you was go ahead. horrible. <laughs> like I, was you go ahead. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I, I didn't think it was that horrible. I thought there were a lot of miss steps and bad details on that car and i know you have kind of some inside info from like seeing it in person that you can't tell from on stage but to me it just looked mm -hmm. like a car that didn't quite belong where it was you know what i mean like mm -hmm. a fine driver that someone threw some ridiculous wheels on and then spit shined anyway and forgot to put lug nuts on it listen i mean some of them are extra that was bad I have a theory on that. I wonder if uh, they had to get the locking a set of locking lug nuts off, and they just didn't have time to replace them. Dude, I I've made a pretty good living in my life fixing auction cars for customers, so like I know yep. how bad most of the cars are. So yep, it's not yep. great. I don't know if you guys can hear my dogs all pissed off in the background. I don't know what that's about. I'm um, still asleep. It's kind of a miracle. I kind of thought he'd aw. be bitching at me by now. He's still doing pretty good, <laughs> and he stopped farting, so that was good. So that is good news. Mr. PF Flyer says on the topic of penetrance, ZEP 45 spray works well also. Never used that one, but good to know. Bill Johnson only has nine vehicles and an old tractor on the property. Those are rookie numbers. You got to pump those numbers up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Rooster has seen Dodge trucks start fires in the dash from the fasteners on the amp gauge loosening up. Interesting. I mean, again, I've, I've heard stories of it. I'm not saying it never happens. Like, I guess it has happened, obviously, but I don't think it's as common or prevalent as people think. Um, Rooster really wants you to take Brandon. <laughs> All right. Um, nice. Um I've got uh, Mexican spec loves cassettes. I have a ton of eight tracks, but no player. I've got a player in the charger, but it's just there for looks. I've got one in the 79 Chrysler and Bell James actually sent me uh, Gordon Lightfoot to test it. I need to test a crappier eight track in it first, but then Gordon Lightfoot, you've got like a mountain of them, don't you? Eight tracks. Like yeah, it's, I need to go it's one it. of those things where I, I, I've had so many eight track cars over the years. I just buy them in estate sales. I have, hundreds and hundreds of HR. I have some good ones too. Like I have like Steve Martin comedy special. I mean like Led Zeppelin. Like I've got some good ones. So nice. Yeah. I'm going to be going through your collection sometime soon. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh yeah. My sister says cassettes are coming back. Mark Norman says some bands I like only release music on cassettes. Um, we have an extensive vinyl collection. I don't know about cassette tapes. Nice. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, yeah, cool. Glenn Uromi had that four-mounted cassette player in a 71 Demon 340. Wow. I can't believe someone would get that in a Demon 340. That's cool. That is super, super, super rare. It's like 0.01% of A-Body's got that. That is a super rare option. That's super cool wow. to have that. It even had the Mopar microphone. Hey, that microphone isn't like right by you right now by chance, is it? Oh, I don't. I think Evan put it away. I don't know where yeah. it is. I, I put it on Lorelei's desk, and it doesn't stay on Lorelei's desk. She gets really mad when I put stuff on her desk. So good for her. Um, Seriously, Evan but, put uh, it away. Evan put it away somewhere. But yeah, we had a factory Chrysler microphone, the dictaphone yeah. for the NOS. cassette player on that charger. Yep, NOS microphone. The seventy-three, the um, Petty Blue Charger, seventy-three Charger. Um, Tom just did the video on that with uh, doing the body drop, installing the drivetrain last week and um that car had the floor mounted cassette player with the yeah the dick what did they call it dicta tape dictaphone dictaphone that's not a good name don't don't put your dictaphone just don't do it say no by the way I, I think we missed this question i remember seeing it go up I, i'm pretty sure we passed it somebody asked us what we did with the rear end on that and we just changed oh, everything on it and we crap. got rid of the rubber yes we got rid of the rubber isolators so yes yeah, um, Someone, sorry i saw it and i got confused uh, i saw something yeah. shiny yeah we so, deleted the isolators yeah but it was a little bit complicated so i uh, the thing is i swear i bought a 71 72 for that 
and mm. got it powder coated and everything. Mm. But it was like six months ago when I did it. We took it out and it was a later one. So the the later 70, 73 and up have a a hole about that big in the in the spring for the rubber ice layers. The rubber goes in there and it sandwiches the, the leaf spring. The and it, it, on the axle. Yeah, it, it slows down noise, vibration, and harshness. Um, we don't like that because rubber makes the car handle worse. So what we did is uh, Firm Fuel actually sells a spacer for it, which doesn't fit, but that's a whole nother story. Like we got this little aluminum spacer in there to go with the stock springs and it didn't freaking fit. So it's, Jamie it's had steel. to do some uh, engineering. It's, aluminum, it's, steel. It's, it's a steel yeah. circle thing, big fat washer looking thing. Basically it didn't fit on the pin. It didn't fit in the axle housing. It fit nowhere. Um, and I was going to try and figure out something else, but I uh, ended up basically putting a shim in the middle out of a tube that I had to grind down and then banging those things on and then welding them to the pins, which is just like probably really stupid, but it worked. It looks great. So yeah. so, yeah, so we basically eliminated all that. So we have stock um, Mopar performance leaf springs in it with the, the earlier shock plates yep. um, with the later axis. So we eliminated, there's no rubber isolate left in my car yep. everything's in the aluminum space aluminum on the, the front stock stuff on the back yep mm -hmm. uh bill johnson okay that 500 was at um mopar uh the, uh crap you know the one the one i went to where gary stole oh that was probably five. geiger's it's the painted one it, like, yeah has the straps on it kind of yeah, that's, that's a but... yeah jack geiger's the guy's name super nice guy it's like, like red primer isn't it or orangish faded yep. orange and red primer something like that yep. That yep. car is awesome. Yep. Yeah, fantastic. I think that I think that's Jack's car. Yeah. yeah, there's only there aren't that many 500s in Washington, so I know where Ooh. most of them are. Yeah, yeah. No, that car was at the uh, the the show up there in Graham. Why can I not think of what it's mm -hmm. called? Anyway, the most good show. Sunbus, thank you. Yes, it was at Sunbus, and I thought it was amazing. It um, I think I got a clip. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got a clip of that car in my Sunbus video. Pretty sure I did. Cool. How do you hand sausle? Okay, good. Delta does, in fact, reface lifters. See, I just assumed they did. Um, yeah, I, I assumed they did. If you grind cans, you probably reface lifters. So I've never dealt with Delta. I want to. They have a great reputation. I've used their stuff that I've gotten in boxes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, someday we will actually deal with them. Because, yeah, everyone needs, like, a cam and lifter grinding company in their pocket. Um Lee Houston says, A-bodies have truly been underrated. Yes, they have. I agree. That's why I liked them. That's why I got into um, A-bodies, because they were cheap. I could have five of them. I couldn't have one charger, but I could have five A-bodies really easily. And I fit in them. Some of us are too tall uh, to fit in A-bodies. Yeah, I'm 6'5", although I did daily drive a, a 74 Gold Duster with a snakeskin vinyl top for like two years right out of college. Oh, so I think, I, yeah. Driver. We must have talked about that before. My first daily driver mm -hmm. Mopar was also a 74 Duster. It had mm -hmm. um, hang 10 bucket seats and maybe front door panels. No, I think it was just the bucket seats. And it had a sunroof effect into it. Yeah, I remember that car. I went up to one of my first friends who got married. We did a bachelor party up in Vancouver. I remember driving it up there. And I opened the trunk at the border to, like, show the you know what was in the trunk and the trunk would not close after that so i basically had to tie my bag to the trunk so it wouldn't like fly open on the freeway wow. so it was like basically going like this the entire way the rest of the way up there from the border up to vancouver <laughs> that's amazing dude mine was a band rig i mean when i started driving i was playing shows all the time and i can tell you that a duster trunk is huge and you can put a complete yeah. half stack pedal board and two guitars in the trunk of a duster they're huge. Like the, the fastback, there is a yeah. huge trunk on those. Yeah. It's a big opening yeah. too. The darts is lower and the opening is not as good. So yeah, the duster is far superior when it comes to band gear. Yeah. Gary said, yep. Mm -hmm. Jack Geiger's 500. He drove with us to Talladega in 2019. Nice for the wing car cool. reunion or the aero car reunion. Hans Sossel, uh, I have 50 cars and 30 motorcycles. Am I sick? Yes, but you've no. come to the right place. <laughs> Tom, the mere fact that you said that tells me you're sick too. <laughs> yes, it's a sickness and we all have it. So welcome to the club. The first, the first step is to admit you have a problem. Is Our meetings like are it? Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> Dan Tupper saw Hard a Mopar, yeah, factory cassette 
uh, with microphone recorder and a 74 RAM charger. I've never seen that, but mm. what I have seen is the factory, also very rare, optional CB uh, radio option. I sent you Dude, a picture. You know that. that you know that Gary bought an NOS one for his RAM charger in my truck right now, right? That's cool. Yeah, that's going in there. The factory CB is going to going to Gary's Macho RAM charger. Awesome. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Eric Rude says, however, the 8-track has become the most versatile format available. You can use an 8-track to cassette adapter and then a Bluetooth mm -hmm. to, to cassette adapter mm -hmm. in the cassette. That's genius. I have an 8-track uh, to cassette adapter. I don't know where it is, but I know I have one. I picked one up at a dealership one time. I don't know where it is. but I've never yeah. seen one of those. That's awesome. Good night, Donnie. Mm -hmm. He's probably still listening. I got about five minutes to Hemi just woke yeah. up and I got the kids to bed pretty soon. So about five good. minutes. Well, I've got about 15 yeah. minutes or something. Um, Fleetwood. I hadn't thought about that. You might need a puller to get the yoke off. It depends on how much of a fight it puts up. Yeah. Sometimes you can get lucky. So, well, it depends. Yeah. I mean, a little bit of heat and a hammer, but carefully applied. You don't want to damage your pinion bearings. Um, Heat it up in some spray, and you may get lucky. But, yeah, you might need a puller. And remember, mashed potatoes are just Irish guacamole. Donnie's are always weird. I told him that the other day. <laughs> and instead of being, like, emotionally uh, damaged, he said, yeah, but you can still use them. Anyway. <laughs> PB Blaster smells like root beer. Yeah, I don't find it uh, non-pleasurable. I think it's fine. Why are you sniffing penetrating oils? Not only sniffing them, but then burning them and smoking what comes off. Just don't do uh, that to break clean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad for you. Uh, oh, Josh Jesh dropped in. Uh, Josh Jesh, or John Jesh, one of the Jeshes. Why did your names have to be so similar, guys? I'm terrible at names. I'm sure it's Josh. It's got to be Josh. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, Got me a present, and I can't wait until it gets here. Uh, it's awesome. It's it's actually two presents. Anyway, uh, Josh drove 200 miles into Kenworth and almost solid fog in North Dakota. Man, when I was getting into Minnesota to get to Rooster's Place, the fog was insane. We get that here, but this was for like 100 miles. Anyway, good times. Just landed. Well, welcome to it. You made it. Oh, my sister loves the smell of free all in the morning. Nice. Yes, it's called huffing. Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> uh, liquid wrench is a good one, Spitfire Mike. Yes, failure equal, equals views. We're familiar. I'm sure there are more good um, comments in here. Dan Tupper has encountered burned um, instrument panel boards from the uh, alternator gauge bolts. I mean, yeah, they heat up, you know. The, yes, they do that. Powered by crap, but in the dare font on a t-shirt. Yeah, it's cut rate right auto parts. That's their shirts. <laughs> I have their hat. I need to get their shirt. Uh, yeah. It's you've it's been two minutes. You've got three left. Have you seen any good other good questions that I missed? Mm. Greg says, appreciate your hoarding video. I watched my wife. You helped me justify my workshop. Yeah, I am a hoarder. We're here to help. Um, yep, we are. Let's see. Bill Johnson, my wife is also a bit of a plant hoarder, but not 1,200. Yeah, not quite that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've attended a few Barrett Jackson auctions. A lot of the cars are worse. Yeah, I fixed a lot of them. Like the lights make these cars look really, really good. They are strategically positioned and they don't open hoods of the bad cars. They don't show the underside pictures of the cars. Like, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, Edward Poe says, every time I try to play an old 8-track, they get eaten. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of. That's why I need a crappier one to test before I ruin Gordon Lightfoot. Totally. <laughs> I'm not putting that on the board. <laughs> nice. All Classics Restoration. Um, when I was 16, I worked for a guy who had a 71 Roadrunner Hemi car with every option available, including the cassette with the dictaphone mic option that's awesome yeah mopar foaming penetrant oil is the best i used um mopar's um the spray that's what it is uh for the choke riser thing and it worked to unseason engine 
What about a drum kit? Um, I've got Thomas. I've got Long Lug, Tama. I think they're rock stars. They're the best. Tom's say got hi. a tiny dog. Say, say hi to the world. Can we he kiss? Doesn't want to do that. He wants to look at your face. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. He doesn't want to be on camera. He's a little shy. Uh, He's still a lap dog. He won't be very much longer. <laughs> no, but then he'll still want to be. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> Mexican never Mexican was, though. mashed potatoes right now. I love mashed potatoes. Nice. Tell Tom not to swipe them when it shows up at his shop. Swipe, what? swipe what? The A tracks? I guess. Oh, that's probably it. Okay. I got plenty of A tracks. Don't worry about it. Oh, he's, he's got a lot. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Mm hmm. I have a lot. Very Kuda, what is closer to B body size 71 onwards? Not A body. Oh, oh, you're sorry. You're talking about, got it, Australian cars. Yep. Yep. Pretty much A body or nothing in Australia. But then the, uh, oh, whatever the next Valiant was. V Is that the VF? I'm not good with any of that. If we had them here, it would be different. But yeah, yeah, they enlarged them. Yeah. It was it was only A bodies in Australia, New Zealand in uh, like the 60s and Yep. Up to the All early. Right, a couple last questions here, Tom. Why do you have a fifty-seven three MC dashboard? Because I, I had a three hundred F and I traded a bunch of parts to Wildcat and I thought it was cool, so it's in my shop. Um, cool. Love to the big C guys. You must not know me very well because that's pretty much all I have is C body. So I'm a huge C body guy. I've got a three hundred Hertz, the GT. I've got a sixty-eight Sport Fury four forty-four speed car. I've got another sixty-eight four forty-four speed. Fury hardtop. I've got another 384 speed 68 Sport Fury convertible, which I'm getting a 440 HP this weekend. So, yeah. ooh, are you getting those wheels? Mine. Yeah, and the wheels. Yes. Good. I need those. We're gonna operate. We're gonna do a lot of OPZs this week, which is I'm Operation not getting Page paid. Zero. I'm not getting paid no, till next paid month. For a while. <laughs> but there's a guy who, a uh, local guy, customer. I bought some parts from him. He's he took a really really nice 69 Charger and is doing a resto mod on it. So they're basically taking every single part off of it, and I'm buying all of them for a lot of, for probably too much money. But a running 69 440 HP is you know pretty nice to have. And I've got a 68 Sport Fury convertible I bought last summer, and I'm pretty sure it's going to go in that car because it's a three three four speed car, but it's not the original engine anyways. Yeah. And I think we just put a 440 HP in there and just rock it. on the summer. So oh yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Uh, convertible races, yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hell yeah. I'll race the 63 dart. Hell yeah. Power to wait, baby. Uh, later, Snoopy Boobs. Thanks for being oh here. Uh, isn't Liquid Wrench just Donnie drunk? <laughs> Something like that. Oh. Uh, yeah, Josh Jesh is talking about my presence. They're being shipped to your place. You're not allowed to. Mm. You're not allowed to keep them. Okay. Mm, <laughs> um, All right. I got to run. I got to put kids in bed. He's got to go potty. So I'll... Uh, so th thanks for having me on, Jamie. I appreciate yep. it. Um, I just oh, yeah. I just passed two thousand subscribers today. I thank yes. everybody for subscribing to my channel. It's pretty yep. awesome. I'm pretty, it's pretty crazy. I only started doing this about six months ago. I mean, obviously, I've been doing this my whole life, and th what I'm doing on videos is what I've been doing my whole life. It's not like it's anything special, yep. but uh, you know, I hit two thousand subscribers in six months, and I think that's I'm pretty proud of that. I've um, thank everybody for watching and uh, really appreciate it. So nice. Uh, yeah, and if you somehow haven't subbed to Tom's channel, it's Rocket Restorations, so go find him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, thanks for being here. All right, bye, Hammy. Yep, all right. We'll see, see you later. Bye. Want to say bye? Bye. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> okay, bye. He's not having it. <laughs> all right, bye. Later. Tom Herger, Rocket Restorations. Don't you know there ain't no devil? That's just God when he's drunk. Yeah, that makes sense. She makes a ton of money selling Dahlia tubers flowers. Nice. Oh, that's cool. My wife would probably love to do that. Uh, on my uh, to-do list is build a bunch of flower beds. <sighs> Good times. Eric Rude says, be sure to put on a fresh belt in your old 8-track player. Oh, what about fitting a drum kit? Um, they fit in PT Cruisers really well. And uh, old cop cars, I can tell you that. As far as the A-body, I mean, I, I've done it. 
the duster was always better. The shallower trunk in the swinger. I love the swinger. It's I, I actually prefer that body style, I think. But the flat trunk lid, it just really limits your uh, trunk storage um, capabilities, options, especially for drums. Howdy, Cleveland Maker. Hey, guys. I'm from the comments. Give some love to Big C guys. Yeah, Tom's the, the full-size guys among us. Uh, and then Cleveland uh, Maker specified, I mean, 57 to 61 forward look, Royal Lancers to Sotos. Hey, I'm all about that. That 61 Polera, uh, really wanted to do that uh, as the Lemons car. But no, someone had to sell it. Good times. Richard Robbins, gents. Is new engine break-in a service either of you provide? Oh, it's something I've done many, many times, so I could. Um, these days, we're breaking in engines on our run stand. Um, it's set up specifically for big block Chrysler. We do have enough parts to fit a small block, but we haven't done that yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's something we could fit in. Uh, we'd prefer to have the weather nice. Now, if this is already in a car and you want me to, like, come to your house or something, you know, if you're close enough. Western Washington area. I mean, that, that might be something that we could do or it can come to the shop or whatever. Um, it is something we do. I can't say it's, I can't say we've ever done a job where it's just breaking in an engine, but you know, we can figure it out. Yeah. VH. Okay. Got it. VH. Got it. Yeah. They're, they're enlarged a little bit over the A body. Those are like their own whole own thing. Yeah, I'm not putting the comment about the puppy licks on the board. <laughs> Mexican spec. It is easy to find a performance A or B body, but a performance C body is a challenge to find. Yeah, especially, say, a 70 Sport Fury GT or any of the many 68 four-speed Furies Tom owns. Yes, they are not everywhere. Yeah, I, I think the VH Charger is a cool car. Um yeah, there's cool stuff down there. I, I, I've said this before. I'd really like to get my hands on a Hemi 6. Uh, they're probably a little rich for my blood, but I hope to find one someday. That would be cool. Josh Jesh also watches Tom. Yeah, Tom's got a lot of good info. I watch all his videos. And not just, you know, because I'm uh, obligated or whatever. <laughs> it's almost 8 o'clock my time, so it's probably like really late where most of you guys are at. So I do thank you for hanging out. Really appreciate that. Um, if you have any last minute questions or requests, let me know. I might play a song, but I haven't figured out what the song is yet. My sister wants to know if there's a plan yet for the 30K special. I don't know. We're at 26,610 or something right now. Uh, so that is something I need to start thinking about. I wasn't planning to do a 20. I was going to hold out for 50, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. No idea. Um, I'm taking suggestions, I guess. Nice. Nice. Yeah, all classics. Um, allegedly, it might be my fault that he made it to 2000 so fast. Maybe. Just saying. Um, well, I shared one of his videos and it was a really good video. And for whatever reason, it just took off. He get a t got a ton of uh, exposure off of that really fast. And then he has since done a good few other videos that did pretty well. It's had its ups and downs. That is just how it goes. But he kind of follows the rules and kind of follows my formula a little bit, which, you know, I'm not saying it works for everyone, but it's working pretty well for us. And that's just um, consistent uploads the same days every week, usually, although mine do change around a little bit. Um, you know, we're all about that professional appearance, the titles, the thumbnails, the logos, you know, it's just such a huge part of it. Um, and I know I talked with you about a lot of that same stuff some time ago. So yeah, whatever he's doing, it's working. So I think he's putting good stuff out there. Obviously it's Mopar centric. So I watch it. Um, Mexican spec has a great point. A lemons car is a newer front wheel drive piece of crap, not a classic Mopar. You're not wrong. The best cars are Ford probes, uh, Kong, uh, Intrepids, that sort of thing, um, V6 front wheel drive. But if you want to get the index of effluency, uh, BMWs, rear wheel drive cars do pretty, can do pretty well too. Um, if you want the index of effluency, you need to show up with the wrong car. 
um, and a Mopar is the wrong car, and we're Mopar people. So if we're going to do it, that's how we're doing it. But yeah, you're right. I mean, a Ford Escort's more at home there than an A-body. Well, Rooster wants to know if I'm doing the trunk gasket in his Coronet, probably a Trev job. Uh, I don't know what a Super Bowl is, a Superb Owl or whatever. I will be live. Yes. I might I might make an appearance at some friend's uh, Super Bowl party, but not because it's the Super Bowl, because they're my friends. And it's at their new house, which I had a small part in helping to build. So anyway, Paul Steinberg, thanks for being here. Everybody that's checking out, it is about that time. Uh, no beret. You have a good one. Han Sossel says, at 30K, do a bitch and burnout. I could do like 10 bitch and burnouts. Ah, Greg Ryan says for the 30K, uh, grow the beard back <laughs> or shave it off. The Fuse Man is cruising out of here with his 94 Voyager. I really want a turbo four speed, uh, turbo four cylinder, five speed caravan someday. I hope to find one. Thanks for being here, Glenn. Have a good one. Scott Thurston, I don't, thankfully, don't know how to play that song. Nice. Uh, my sister wants to have a sibling shop chaos evening. That could be the 30K. Um, I actually, maybe. I actually don't know any Gordon Lightfoot, which is weird. I could probably figure Sundown out, but mm, I can't play all 17 minutes of uh, uh, the Fitzgerald for sure. The Toe Rollas are good. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, apologies. I can't actually play any Gordon Lightfoot, which is weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. We, and, and you're absolutely right. But first off, we're not talking about destroying it. Um, maybe it'll get crashed into a wall. We were going to use that 61 Polara because it had issues that made it not necessarily a viable restoration candidate. And it was really, really cool. Um, but I have a crappy A body that was free with no title. So, like, hmm. Yeah, it's going to be fine. There are more out there. Was today that? No, next week's the sports ball. Um, I actually don't know on the highway either. And Tom is now sending me Craigslist ads. Oh, yeah, that's my van. Yeah, um, my old van is up on Craigslist in, uh, in Washington. So if you need one, uh, make an offer. Some of the pictures in the ad are my pictures from when I sold it. Anyway, hilarious. <laughs> 9 out of 10 proctologists driving Ford Pro. All right, I got to go have dinner, so I don't have time for a song. Um, 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 yeah, nice. Awesome. We're going to do a lemons Mopar. I apologize, but we'll use the crappiest one we can get our hands on. Um, we won't, we wouldn't ruin a good car. We know better than that. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for being here. Folks, people. Ethan wasn't here. That's weird. Um, all right. I'll see you next week. Um, uh, I don't think I'll have a guest for once. All right. Take it easy. Yeah, that was the super condensed version of Rumble. All right. I'm hitting the button. Bye.